Oh no. There we go. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. There you guys go. Dog. Now you can hear us. <laughs> and that's why I believe dogs shouldn't be able okay, to vote. But look, as I was just saying, I think dogs should vote. Uh, <laughs> So, welcome everyone. It's the first ever episode of The Rectification. My name is Ivy. I go by Gabriel the Girl. She, her, on every other platform of preference. And I will be your DM today um, with these wonderful and beautiful women. Um, Ava, if you want to go first and tell us you know, about yourself and where to find you. Uh, hi, my name is Ava. Ava Makes. And you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and mostly TikTok. So, TikTok is Ava Makes, and I'm very excited to get started. Oh, and my pronouns are she, her. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Ab. Hello. Um, I'm Abby. Um, I'm mostly known as Big Girl Productions on most social media, um, like Instagram, mostly TikTok, mostly TikTok. Um, I am she, her, and I'm so excited. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perfect. Um, <laughs> Din. Hi, my name's Din. Uh, I'm mostly on Instagram and TikTok as Din Studios, Din Studios 15 for TikTok. Perfect. And I go by she, her pronouns. Perfect. Uh, Nat? Hi, I'm Nat. Uh, my, you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at nat20 underscore NTC. Yeah, that, that's me. Oh, <laughs> pronouns Hershey as in the chocolate. Perfect. <laughs> Val? <laughs> Hi, I'm Val. Uh, she, her pronouns. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at basic Valkyrie or Instagram at basic underscore Valkyrie. Perfect. Let's get this done. All right. Perfect. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, before we start, there will be a surprise when we come back from the break. So make sure you guys are here when we do that because it'll be very cool. Very excited. I cannot wait. <laughs> Thank you all for already showing up and being in the chat. We're very excited. As you can see, there's a little bit of nerves, but these girls are going to be fantastic. Um, I promise them won't result in the TPK in the first session. Um, That's a promise. <gasps> I'm going to hold you to that promise. It's, it's yeah, I not said a the thing. first session. Okay. Yeah. yeah right. After that, it's yeah. free reign. But after the <laughs> no first one session, do that. I said the first session. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So. Perfect. As far as the pops go. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So, our adventure begins with a peaceful scene. Rolling hills in the distance, dance or er, grass dancing gently to a breeze, and a panning view of a lake and adjoining valleys. In the midst of all of this nature sits a large city that is bustling with life. People are strolling the, seat, the streets, talking, chatting, you shopping. Children are running around and laughing. On a hill placed slightly above the town, a castle stands, peaceful and inviting. You look, you, you feel yourselves blink, and your view shifts to that of you inside the market. You cannot look to your sides, but you can feel the feeling of allies to your sides, but you can't quite make them out of who they are. As you blink again for a second time, your vision is suddenly engulfed in flames. Instead of happy scene that you had just seen before you and witnessed, around you is smoke and flame fill the air. You feel the weight of your weapon in your hands, but you do not remember pulling it. As, as you're looking around, you can feel the, the, that presence again of your allies by your sides. As you blink again and look around, a large looming shadow is cast on the wall across from you. And then, in an instant, you wake up. We start with all of you in your beds or where you've fallen asleep the night before. Since some of you did not find yourselves going out to some of the taverns, or some of the inns, but instead find yourselves sitting passed out at a local tavern, even though you do not remember falling asleep. As you awake, we start our journey at the Drunken Dragon, where we find two of our players currently sat fast asleep, but waking with a start in a cold sweat as you wake up from this vision, having felt the heat of the flames and seeing the color of orange dancing across your skin as you watched this village of a town that you are not quite sure of dance across your skin. As you open your eyes, you are back in a familiar place, which is the Drunken Dragon. For our characters... 
that are currently presiding at the drunken dra- the, the drunken dragon, what would you like to do? <laughs> There's two of you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, I reach for my weapon, weapon as an instinct as I wake up just to make sure it's still there and it is still there it's it's very early morning the sun is just starting to come up and the tavern owner is kind of standing there has just come in he left you there for the evening you've been here before it's been a couple of times so he's standing there ah he fell asleep again here huh as he walks over behind the bar and starts cleaning up you look it's off- not my fault everyone tells good stories here. It is your fault that you keep ending up here. And he looks over to the other individual who is just starting to raise their head off of the table. I raise my head up <laughs> and I say, too much, too much last night. Yes, well, that's what happens <laughs> when you keep ordering more and continues just cleaning. You recognize this man as Bert. He is the tavern owner that you have all become very good friends with. As you're, as you've spent some time here, you know, starting after you've come into town, you've started to get to know him a little better as you spend more and more and more time here. Uh, he is a human man with bright orange red hair with green eyes, and he's known to tell a couple of stories himself, whether they're lies or truths you haven't been able to tell. The two of you are the only two besides Bert who are left in the tavern. And as you raise your heads, you, you recognize each other from the night before. Having partied a little bit, bought each other a drink, seen each other around. <laughs> as you raise your head, you're both there. You recognize so, each other. You ended up staying here too, huh? Well, I can't remember what story you're telling. It was vaguely entertaining and it got way more entertaining as I kept bringing drinks over still can't remember it that is how it usually goes it gets more entertaining as it it goes along i've got many good stories i just remember it was great it was fantastic zero idea what you said yeah yeah I, i i i don't remember either i didn't really have a very good night's sleep i rough morning rough morning Perfect. If you two want to describe what you look like while you are sitting here, um, Talus, if you want to go first. I don't like going first. Because I said so. Because DM said so. Um, So, I am about average height, height 5'6". I have blonde, kind of wavy, but unkept long hair. Very piercing green eyes and a big scar across my face. Uh, I would consider my character to be fairly attractive, um, but she's also very rough looking. So uh, definitely not someone you want to mess with, but someone you can admire from afar. Perfect. And her companion there, who is now equally you know, as struggling as she is. Uh. Raven shakes off her sleep, and the first thing you'll notice of her is her shocking red hair. It just seems so out of place for the rest of her. It's just bright red. She has very pale skin. She is humanoid looking. And she's dressed in a lot of browns, a lot of blend into the background type of clothes. Someone that you imagine that would be seated at a tavern, but wouldn't besides her red hair, wouldn't stand out anywhere. Beautiful. You both have had similar dreams. You both can only recall certain moments, but you can definitely remember the heat of those flames that you experienced in that dream as things started crumbling around you underneath the weight of it and just the sheer amount of damage there was done to this marketplace. But neither of you, being a little drunk, a little hungover, and quite remember exactly who was standing next to your sides. We change our scene as we pan out to the same, well, well, to members of this party as well, who also are waking up with a start. Corey, you find yourself in a, in a tavern, or in, a, in an inn that you've been spending your evenings there. 
not quite sure where you want to go. Hmm? Not quite sure where you want to go next. But this is kind of where you, you found yourself after meeting your new friend. You wake up first. Tell me what Cora looks like. All right. So when you look at Coraline, uh, much like Raven, the thing that stands out about her the most is her bright orange hair. It is a halo of curls that just is super unkept all around her face. Um, she has kind of kind of some circular features. She is definitely on the younger side of uh, her half elven uh, heritage. Uh, she wears a on top of her head with her much curly hair. We've, we've dropped the accent because I'm just describing her. Um, <laughs> Uh, she wears a top hat, um, which is very decorative, and it kind of and it has the same coloration as the long coat that she wears along with it. And she, yeah, Perfect. dresses in very black colors, Perfect. which is very stark against her orange hair. Absolutely perfect. All right. You awake with a start, having had a very similar dream as well. Recalling a few details, cannot quite remember who was by your side, just remembering that shadow that was looming over you on the back wall. But you wake up and you are in the same room that you fell asleep in last night. Um, if I go outside of my room, mm -hmm. I pick up my, my book, sure. which I was probably cuddling throughout the night oh, because absolutely. I love my books. You 100% were cuddling um, your book last night. I will walk out of my room and probably go to a room next to me and knock on that door. Perfect. Hello. Are you in there? Perfect. Perfect. All right. As you knock, it's kind of quiet. And then from the other side of the door, Cersei, you're kind of groggy. I want you Cersei. I, I, I want you to roll me a perception check. <laughs> First roll of the game. First roll God. of the game, and I need a perception right. check. I had my little sister uh, choose my first 20 to roll today, Ooh. so let's see how well that works. <laughs> okay, perception? That would just be straight perception? Yep, straight perception. Add your modifier. Yes. Uh, that's going to be a 21. Perfect. Absolutely. Nice. You sense a strange familiarity from that town, but you can't quite place it. As those flames were, were going down around you, as that marketplace was coming down, all you can recall is the sheer panic as you felt like you needed to run somewhere else. Then you awake with a start as you hear a loud, Cersei, banging on your door. <laughs> Cersei! Oi! <laughs> Cersei, if you want to describe your character for me. Um, Cersei is a bit odd looking in your average one of the mill town, uh, namely because she is bright turquoise. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, that's not what you normally see just wander around town, but she is bright turquoise um, with very large, well, not very large, but uh, overly large, dark, dark blue eyes, um, kind of a wider mouth, kind of a flatter face, um, average height. Uh, the most noticeable things that people would really pick up on besides the blatant color is the fact that her hair just kind of moves and flows around her head, almost as if she's underwater all the time, even if she's just standing in the middle of a windless area. She also does have um, thinned ears, her fingers are thinned, and she has um, these uh, fins on the sides of her uh, forearms. She's very fish looking, uh, which is kind of strange to <laughs> see <seen> inland, <laughs> in particular. Um, very much a fish out of water. Very much a fish out of water. <laughs> very much a fish. No pun intended, but fully intended, actually. Pun intended. Incredibly. <laughs> if, if the 
the viewers did not come here for the puns. They're in the, like if if they are not here for puns, they're in the wrong spot. Um, <laughs> perfect. All right, so Cersei, you open the door, hearing your new party member who you've recently acquired bounding on your door. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah, she... How do you do? <laughs> so cute. Boing, boing. You you wake up much earlier than I expected. <laughs> much earlier. <sighs> Yeah. Uh, Want to go on an adventure? Yeah. Um, cool, um, because I have to go to the library today, have a book I need to return, and then we can go on and do whatever you need to do. <sighs> Does your um, hair always flow like that, even in the morning? I thought it would like take a break or anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'd say I have a little bit of bed hair right now, but we're fine. Um, <laughs> just runs her fingers through her hair and it just kind of flows back to where it was like this is fine um yeah we can't we can't really stay here much longer really all um, right well if you need to get ready i'll go order some breakfast and then you can meet me downstairs and she will go and skip off right right <laughs> from across the hall slowly waking up in a groggy state with with a stretch, Rad wakes up as well. Kind of looking around, he is also in the same spot as where he fell asleep last night. But he can fully remember the f- heat of those flames from his dream. They felt very strange and very real to him. Rad, describe your character for me. Uh... I'm gonna say I fell asleep. Am I in a in the tavern? You are. Or... In, you are in the inn at the moment. In the inn. Okay. Am I in my room or in? You are in your room. In my room. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna. Uh, stretching out is a large six foot seven wolf, uh, bipedal wolf. It's a wolf kind. Um, and he has brown and golden hues, more like a natural. Uh, uh, neutral toned fur rather than like a gray wolf or a white wolf um and he is very much not a morning person so he is <laughs> he's stretching out and just like not ugh, ready to start the day you um woken he... by the loud banging of core on the other room as he just heard loud cersei cersei as the door opened and you could hear them Visiting in the hallway. Uh, I get up and go to the door and open it up as I imagine Cersei starting to leave, or uh, Coraline starting to leave. Do you, do you mind not, uh, you know, being so loud this early in the morning? It's uh, not all of us want to wake up this early, you know. Sorry. Um, she's a little eager. A little eager. <laughs> Ega, yes, I. God, I is that, that you? Uh, up, sorry. Up, up here, <laughs> to like tiptoe, <laughs> to like be uh down the stairs or to the yeah, just yep. to whatever the dining room is. It yep. be like. So you you down you go down the stairs. You've been here a day or two. You're you're familiar okay. where you would go get your water and 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 you know your food and order it. Um, as you head down the steps. You pass Anne. She's a half elf. You're very familiar with her, as her and her husband are the the run. Her and her and Quentin, her husband, are the runners of this inn. Uh, her husband is a human, and you pass her in the hallway as she watches you go past. Oh, you're up early. Good morning, Anne. How are you doing this fine morning? I'm doing very well, thank you. You seem very much a morning person. <laughs> I like to wake up when the sun is up. Anything for the breakfast this morning? Uh, yes. Um, I should have breakfast done very soon. Do you want me to bring it up to your room? Mm, no, nah, I think I'll go have it down in the dining area. Sure, not a problem. Um, Quentin should be awake. I think he was going to start breakfast first. If you want to go visit with him or go see him first. All right, I'll go see if he needs any help too. And she'll... <laughs> All right. So as you go into the, the dining room, it's a small, you know, 
you, this is a tiny room that you've seen before. You've been here a couple of times. You've brought your books in here to read. Quentin, who is a human, he's brown hair, brown brown leathers, is standing behind the griddle where he is cooking some pancakes and eggs for this morning. As, as he's sitting there, you know, he kind of waves as you come in and then goes back to his work. He's not the most talkative, as Anne seems to be the social one of the two of them, but he's pleasant enough. Good morning, Quentin. What you making? Uh, he kind of looks at. He's like pancakes and, and eggs. What's in pancakes? And yeah, flour and sugar and some other stuff. Have you never had pancakes, Miss? I've never made pancakes. I was just curious. Oh, sweet summer child. <laughs> 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 As they have their conversation, you know, and him trying to now describe how to make pancakes as he's also making pancakes. We go back upstairs. Cersei, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? I'm unmuting myself for the first. <laughs> that might be helpful. Very important. Um, Cersei is going to just grab her stuff up and She's going to take the time to put her armor on and everything because uh, sounds like she and Coraline are planning on uh, heading out uh, today. So she's getting everything up, gathering her things, and then she's going to head down to uh, join her companion. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, as you head down the stairs, you don't see Anne as she is now off doing her own duties, but you do see Coraline and Quentin now him hit her also behind the girdle with him making pancakes and he's just kind of like dealing with it you can see the look on his face like this would go much faster if she wasn't right here but he's taking the time so <laughs> it says Cor is just back there helping him oh seriously did you know that i can mix flour sugar baking soda eggs and you mix it into a pot you can make pancakes uh, yeah, I've worked in I've I've worked in the gallery, uh, in the galley a few times on the ship. Um, yeah, that's how pancakes are made. <laughs> um, huh. fascinating. And like she's like scribbling like little ingredient notes in her her book, <laughs> just just because she wants to. I'm perfect. All right, um, Brad, are you still upstairs? Or are you going to come down for breakfast? Uh, yes. Um. As he's slowly waking up, uh, he puts back on uh, his armor, his chest plate, um, readjusts everything from his rough night of sleep. Um, and then quickly, as he's going down and leaving his room down to go get some breakfast, he reopens his notebook and puts on, um, which I forgot to mention this earlier, over his left eye, he has uh, three deep set in scars over his left eye that has messed up his eye. So on his uh, one of his many earrings on his ear has a monocle encased in metal. And so he unhooks that and puts on his monocle and starts reading as he's going down to the dining room. Perfect. All right. You come down <laughs> into the steps into the dining room where you see them still discussing pancakes 20 minutes later. Um, <laughs> because Cora has now discovered you can add blueberries into pancakes. <gasps> She's like losing her mind. Have I, has Coraline seen Radifer before? Or is this the first time I've seen him? You've been in town a couple of days now. Um, you've already gone to the library once at least, correct? Uh, yes. To okay. pick up the book that I'm going to be returning. You absolutely saw Rad <laughs> in passing. Uh, you have not gotten the chance to actually talk to him. But you do recognize him because there's not many of his kind that wander around this area. Yeah. Sorry, but she's going to have a fangirling moment and like freak out and like. <laughs> oh my God. And if she's going to like put down all of the blueberries that she's been making, grab her book and like run straight up to Radifer. Are you. What are you? Do you have to brush all your fur each morning? Are you. Are your eyes two different colors? What is that monocle you got on there? And like just a barrage of questions right after each other, just streaming. <laughs> uh, uh, are you always this articulate in the morning? <laughs> yes. You're an interesting little pop, I can see that. <laughs> no, but seriously, do you have to brush all your hair all at once? 
like how long does that take you do you shed in the winter or in the summer is it summer it's summer <laughs> yeah what se- yeah what season is it right now it's like- uh it's it's ki- it's summer turning into fall so not quite fall yet okay okay so if Dang you were it. to shed, you would be starting to get your overcoat. Yeah, I was, gonna, I was just going to plug some and be like, here you go, but it's not summer yet, or it's not um, <laughs> nope, not summer, yet. so never mind. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, l- little one, let me at least get a drink and some breakfast, and I can answer a few of your questions. Maybe not all. Okay, okay. That sounds great to me. I it will is, be waiting to talk to you. It is wise not to tell all of your secrets as soon as you meet someone, just to let you know. Oh. And Coraline will turn around and like write that down in her little book and like continue <laughs> and just walk away to go make more pancakes. And he kind of <laughs> kind of chuckles as he's sitting down and gives a wave to if the bartender's at the um and sees and just sort of gives a wave being like whatever you got i'll take perfect sort of gesture all right so yeah you have your breakfast and then we kind of fade out as you all are being as as rad as being spammed with questions and Coraline is making now pancakes for the entire group as she has taken over and quentin has relinquished control to her um mostly just supervising now we (laughs) come back to our tavern where our <laughs> ladies have woken up a, a little hungry after their night of drinking a little hungover coffee. <laughs> what would coffee. you two like to do coffee <laughs> Bert. biggest mug of coffee you got Bert, yeah make it too. yeah and he i like your thinking the counter. <laughs> he, he walks behind the counter and starts brewing coffee the smell of it filling the tavern as you both sit there, both roll, roll me con saves. Let's see how hungover we are. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Your first rolls. Uh, oh, here we go. Let, let's see how you guys are feeling. Uh, what is that? Two. Ni- 19. 19. <laughs> oh, no. What was the other one? Oh, we had a constitution of uh, mm-hmm. three. <laughs> 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, as Bert is making coffee, Talus, you you kind of feel a little nauseated as you lean off your table and off the side. Of the, you know, kind of hold hold your gut as you immediately throw up off the side. No. You kind of sit back and sit back, sit a little further back. You're like, okay, maybe maybe two cups of coffee. <laughs> but Bert, Bert, water and coffee and maybe a bucket. Ugh. There's, he kind of sighs. Is there a throw up on my floor? Yep. Oh. Bert, it, it wasn't. Where's your mom? It, it was me, but you know, you know. It, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bert. I'm sorry. <laughs> he rolls you his said- eyes as he goes back behind the counter and, and <laughs> brings, uh, you know, the mop and then <laughs> goes back. He kind of leans it against the table. There Raven just automatically just grabs it and starts cleaning up and just like looks over at Dallas and goes, just sit there and try not to move much. Please. Raven feels <laughs> very best. well, very used to the heavy drinking. And this was no different as Bert comes back with a cup of water and two coffees and sets them down on the table and then looks at Raven. Uh, I was going to do that, but thank you. Um, I, I I plied her with a lot last night. I feel this is the least I can do. Oh, so this is partly your fault. Raven just like literally like shrinks into herself just a little bit and goes, "You know I like getting good stories out of people." Mm-hmm. And then he walks away. <laughs> Bring me that when you're done. I'm going to have to rinse it out. And he's as he walks away, he's muttering to himself, how, oh, God, why did I go into this business? I wanted to be an accountant. Like, oh, um, no. <laughs> as he walks away. No one asks when they say um, an accountant. Thanks. Thanks, uh, 
Raven, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what happened last night? Well, I came looking for good stories. I started applying this one, like, farmer. He was talking about, I forget what he was saying he had in his field. I either learned a lot about wheat or I learned a lot about, like, corn or something. Interesting, but, you know, there's only so much information before. I'm like, okay, I need some, like, other stuff going on. And then you started talking about some previous town that you had been in. Really interesting. So I kept bringing you drinks because you kept talking. Mm. Well, I'll shut. How Sorry. much did I say? Do you remember much of last night? Considering I was pretty much going drink for drink with you and farmer dude. Not a whole lot. Just that you okay, talked about sure, some sort sure. of town. Same. Same. Yeah. Yeah. My city. It's uh, down the, down a few days. Okay. Yeah, that, that sounds about, hey, maybe we could like, you know, go to like, I have to go to the library later. If you want to like come and we could look at a map and you can point it out and re-tell me about something that I can. Are, are libraries quiet? Very. Yes. Yes. Library. That sounds perfect. <laughs> cool. Now drink your water or else. I don't want to repeat of this. Yeah, oh. You're the best. <laughs> as we you know, as we clean up the tavern and you start drinking your coffee feeling a little bit better, roll me another con save. We'll, we'll see how you're doing. Eight. <laughs> roll me with advantage because you have been drinking some water now. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Five. <laughs> oh, no. I need to get you some better con save. Wow. Oh, oh, gosh. Gosh. At <laughs> least it wasn't in that one. Um you're starting oh, to feel gosh. a little better. You're still feeling a little nauseated, but not to the point of needing to throw up. You've kind of been there as you're drinking it. Your head still is hurting, kind of a pounding headache. But you're you're getting there. You're doing a little bit better than you were earlier. That that water and that coffee definitely gave you a little bit of a boost there. Except my coffee and I'm like step by step. <laughs> step by step. <laughs> we'll we'll find something on the way to the the library if you can hold down something. Yeah, yeah. Some, something something sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So as we fade back in to our party that was previously at the, at the inn. Breakfast is finished. You all have had your fill of pancakes that Coraline actually did a pretty decent job for making them her very first time. I'm uh, so glad you didn't make me roll for it. <laughs> I thought about it, but I was like, you know, Coraline probably smart <laughs> to figure this. it out. Just let, let her have let it. Let her have this this, this time. I, um, I do want to know, I probably... <laughs> like scarf down my food to get to the library as fast as possible because I wasn't done. Perfect. So you left first? I... Yeah. Perfect. All right. So you are well on your way to the library. You kind of head out with a hurry, a quick wave to the others that are kind of in there just as a courtesy wave. Kind of a thank you for the pancakes. I didn't have to make my own breakfast this morning and left. Um, so currently, Cersei and Cor, you are... Quentin has kind of come and cleared your plates when you're done. Kind of going about his business for the rest of the day. Yeah. He didn't even stay for a conversation. I thought he was going to talk to me. That's a mean wolf. I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> not, so, not everyone is a morning person, you have to remember. <laughs> some people have just... a better afternoon. Have to get some <laughs> sun on their face. And then they're right right. Right is rain. Um, what? Why? Why are we stopping by the library today? Why, why well, are we the other day I, to you know, apparently money is a thing. I had to give yeah. a tutor to a, some kid who was failing class in academy, and I had to return some of the history books that I borrowed from the library. But don't worry, it'll be like a quick little. Thing. I'm friends with the guy named Gatti that runs the place. He's a, you know, 
Very stoic and nice person. Wonderful. Oh. Do you want to hear what I had to teach the kid? It was so interesting. So the well, history of this world <laughs> was very... Why don't, we, why don't we walk and talk? Walking and talking. Okay. okay. Or else we'll be here so, all And then... <laughs> She'll like give you a quick little run down of her lesson and like pull out the book that she had used from the library as we're walking over. Cersei is like actively listening to this, like, okay, okay. <laughs> but at the same time, like, we're walking, we're walking. <laughs> Perfect. So, as you are walking, since Rad came to the library first, you come across a large two story building. It is very well kept compared to the other buildings. You can tell that whoever owns this or takes care of it puts a lot of love into taking care of it as you walk up the steps you've been here once before you are familiar with the the librarian as you enter yaddy is standing at his normal spot he is a very tall green lizard folk with thick gold-rimmed glasses as he's carrying around a stack of books putting them away you enter, he kind of nods in your direction, acknowledging your presence that you're there, and continues on his way. Where are you headed, Rad? Um, I'm going to go back to the... Uh, well, presumably the day before, I would have been in the middle of uh, reading books, but I'm not uh, a heathen, and I don't leave them everywhere. So I would have gone back to where I put the books back in place to take them back out again to keep researching. Perfect. Yeah, you walk back to where you put these books. Well, they're right where they, you've left them. There's a couple that you were reading prior. Some of them you had kind of glanced over, put back. They weren't quite what you were looking for. Are you looking for a particular book? Um, e any Anything that has anything to do with... Um, a particular kind of magic that I'm looking into. Yeah, absolutely. Roll so investigation. Investigation. Ooh, finally. And as you are looking, Cor and Cersei, you guys are making your way there. Uh, addition is a thing. Addition um, is a thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, that, 16. 16. Perfect. Okay. Um, as you're, you're kind of looking around, you can find a couple of magic books. You're not quite finding exactly what you're looking for. This library doesn't seem to have the type of magic or not that you can find right off the bat. Um, I go up to what did you say? Yachty? Was Yachty. His name? It's Y-A-T-I. Yeah. I was close. You were very close. As you're doing this, you know, since Yaddy is on the first floor, because this is a two-level, two-story building, as you are talking to Yaddy, kind of talking about the kind of of, of uh, magic you're looking for, in bursts Coraline, followed by Cersei. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! How are you uh, doing this morning there, Yaddy? Oh, hey, one time to see. Back again, I right. see. <laughs> Can't get rid of me that easily. All right, say. So, I will return to Yati and pull out the book that I've been showing Cersei and like the things. Thank you so much for the history of Kevin book. You're the welcome. Poor lad was so lost. As he takes <laughs> it and puts it back onto the pile that he's currently holding. Um... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say something. But... <laughs> go right ahead. You're fine. Go right ahead. So you never answered any of my, or you only answered some of my questions about lizard or folk. Do you have any more time? <laughs> I'm working, but I might be able to procure some time later to talk to you about lizard folk. As this is oh, not the first shit. time that he has seen you come in, these questions are starting to get a little tiresome to him. Rattleford just snorts in laughing. He tries to like, but, you know, but he he's a giant turn. man. He cannot hide it. Coraline will turn to you and then like look up. You escaped some of my questions as well. All right, so, uh, but she'll just kind of shrug that off and turn to Cersei and be all like, all right, well, I'm done here. We can now continue on your adventure. Yeah, um, this is, there's a slight problem with that in that 
I don't exactly know where I'm going. So perfect. Yeah. So when you mentioned the library, I thought perhaps we could try finding a chart and see if we can find something like that. Okay. So to figure out. I can. Like I'm pretty good at libraries. What are you looking for? I can. Uh, a chart. <laughs> uh, chart. Uh, there's another word for it. Uh, Maps. Land. Map. Yeah, map. Looking for a, la uh, a map of the area. I, well, I've never been this far inland before, so I'm not entirely sure where to head from here. Well, Gilder's about to lost his eye, and so I'll turn to Radifer. Do you know where you can find the map? Or, I don't know your name yet. Sorry, <laughs> I'm Coraline Alistor, at your service. <laughs> uh, he takes his giant paw and lightly shakes her hand. But of it. It is a pleasure. I to will me. grab your paw and turn it. Have you ever hurt anybody with your clothes? <laughs> Young one, that is not the question you ask someone when you first meet them. Sorry. S still learning. Um, Why do they scare you a bit? No. Not at all? <laughs> And I sort of clink no. them against my armor. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I do not want you to be afraid of me. But I'm sure we can look through uh, any of these maps here, see if there's something you can look for. I cannot seem to find what it is that I am looking for here. I have searched for many days. So <laughs> What are you looking for? <laughs> young one, you will learn in time. You seem to be only a few moons old. Uh, I saw some maps over here. I think I can help you. It will give my mind a break. Thank you. As you head that direction, <laughs> Yali turns on a heel and walks the opposite direction with the books he's carrying. Um, <laughs> as as right. you guys are looking over the maps, our two tavern patrons have kind of now moved from their seating. Tell us this feeling a little better, slightly better as the day continues on. You guys are making your way also to the library. Is there anywhere else that you were looking for wanting to go? Is there a bakery in town? There is a bakery in town. <laughs> Let's, uh, Raven just grabs Talus' arm and goes, okay, we're going to put some food in you. We're going to go sit you in a quiet corner and let you recover. Baked goods on me. No, 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 no. Um, Ivy, no. No, no. Oh. no. no. Here and I gave her, uh, I don't know, a gold piece. I don't know how much bakery goods are usually worth. Oh, <laughs> did I freeze? You did freeze, but you're okay. We can hear you just fine. Hello. You're okay. We can hear you. <laughs> Am I back? Oh, you're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> you're just fine. You're um, just fine. It takes a second sometimes, but you're good. Uh, I don't know where I left off. <laughs> I was trying to say no, and that I wanted to give a gold piece. I, I think the gold. I don't know how much is bakery goods worth. Like a silver piece, copper piece, yeah, you copper. Can, you, whatever you think. Depends on quite... how good of a bakery. Do you want a whole <laughs> loaf, or are we just going for like a simple scone? I'll, I'll, I'll give her ten coppers, and I'll okay. say, um, okay. um, "You're coming with me anyway. Let's go. Oh, <laughs> go find this bakery." <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um. You find the bakery pretty easily. As you've been around, you know, Kevin for a little while now, you kind of know some of the good sh good shops. And as she hands you 10 copper, you're like, oh, okay. So we need something a little lower end today. As you walk into the bakery known as Sunspot. And as you walk in, the smell of baked breads and pastries fills your nostrils. As you walk in, it's a very warm building from where the ovens are. Behind the... You know, behind the counter is a very s small, brown-haired halfling. And as she stands there, she smiles. What can I get for you today? Well, um, do you still have some of those that, like, delicious cheesy scone things? Yes, I just finished a couple of new ones. So hold on. And she walks into the back of the bakery and comes back with two of them. Is, is this what you're looking for? My dear, you were a blessing. 
Yes. The perfect. Perfect. She wraps them up in some brown paper, puts them on the counter. Um, let's see. You've been in here a couple of times before and you've always been a very good patron to us. Um, I'll give you a discount today. How about we just do one silver? Beautiful. I, I fish it out of my bag and no, I plop it, it down on the I plop it down first. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She kinda looks between the two of you. Uh <laughs> and slides Talus's coin to her. <laughs> Alright, there you go. And she she pushes them a little towards you. Have a fantastic day. Thank you, ma'am. This is oh you don't know how grateful I am for your cheesy scones. <laughs> they are amazing. I'm so glad you like them. It's an it's an old family recipe. Oh, it's great. Okay, tell us. Here you go. Let's go find you some peace and quiet now. Um, and continuing on, library time. I have a book to find. Perfect. I have a question while we're in the library. Can Absolutely. I make a perception check to see if there's anybody else in there? If there's any like You absolutely can make a perception check. Uh, on that note, I, while we're looking at maps, I'd like to look for anything uh, in particular that's of the genre of books and topics that I'm Perfect. in search of. Perfect. Is there oh. a particular topic that, or a particular title that you're looking for? Ooh, that's, uh, we'll go with curses. Curses, interesting. Okay, uh, Nat, go ahead, what did you roll? I rolled a 21 on perception, but can I also look for, like, if there's any ritual casting books? <laughs> you can absolutely look for ritual casting books. <laughs> that's, not, that's not sus at all. It's fine. It's not, <laughs> you never know. That's kind of sus. It's a little <laughs> sus. Um, okay. So, as Kor looks around for some ritual casting books, you kind of come across a hall with some, you know, as, as you go ask Yaddy where you might be able to find that, he tells you upstairs. So you head upstairs. As you're looking through, you can find a couple of books about some ritual casting. They're old, but, you know, it gives you enough detail. You come across okay. some random titles as well, but you find one or two that you can sit and read through. All right. Do, do I know which ones they are? Mm, as you're looking around, you're kind of... You're able to pull one down that you know exactly what it is. And you're able to look through it. Okay, okay. And, and, and. <laughs> you, just, you, just, you just browse through it. Are you looking for any ritual in particular? I was wanting some Liamin's tiny hut just just for, you know, curiosity's sake. Hmm. But I, I feel like I would be hard to find. <laughs> yeah, you could, you could read it, and it definitely has a description of what it's about, but it doesn't have the actual ritual. It's more of a description book of what things okay. do. Good to know. All right, and then, Rad, you were looking for a book of curses, correct? Yes. Okay. I rolled 12 on perception. If I had to roll, I don't... Yeah. Yep, you would have had to roll yep. um, investigation. Oh, investigation. Oh, even better. Uh, 14. 14. Not bad at all. Yeah. You see a couple of books about curses. You see a couple about, you know, beholders. You see a couple about liches. Like, you see a couple of just curses in general. Are you looking for a curse in particular? Or just, like just a generalized? Uh, ge generally, anything about lycanthropy. Okay. Uh, you're not finding anything in particular related to it. And as soon as I find that out, I slam the book shut and put it back. Okay. So Aggressively. You, you slam it shut. Kind of echoes throughout the library. As you don't hear anybody else that's in this library. It's just you guys and your librarian. So you slam it shut. Yeti kind of peeks around the corner at you like, shh, goes back to what he was doing. <laughs> My ears kind of like... Sorry. Coraline and Cersei eh? could have 100% heard you slam that book. Not, not the one, eh? I just cannot seem to find anything that I'm searching for. Every library I go to, that is never the one thing that I need. What, what are you looking for, then? Mm. Curses. How to break them. Curses? Curses. Mm. 
Interesting. <laughs> that is all you need to know for now. Understood. How 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 many town libraries have you been traveling through, trying to many, find um, curses? Many, many. It is not trying. I'm not trying to curse anyone. If that is what you were thinking, again, I shall say, no, there is no need to be afraid of me. Oh no, you I said can... breaking. I'm just interested. Everyone has a story, including yours. Yeah, you're agreed. Just looking at you, you're a bit far from where do you come from? I hate. Why do you say that? I'm joking. Well, I... I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rad, I, I... with the information, your history that you you have, you would know that the nearest port town to Kibben is a day away, at least. It's it has been a minute or two since I've seen uh if I'm correct on this. Are you uh, do I know I've, I've, I mean I've been around. I know water genasis, right? Uh it, So you're aware that water genasis and genasis in general are not a race that you see frequently. They're very yeah, so rare and far and few and in between. So this is while you've seen them in the past, this is something that is a rare occurrence. It, it has been quite the time since I've seen someone of uh, water genasi, I can guess, from your hair just gives it away. Okay. It is quite beautiful, I must say. Uh, thank you. Um, has Cersei ever heard the term genasi before? In her travels? No? Nope, she has not. Um, thank you. Uh, genasi. There, there might there might be another term for it. I'm not sure. That is just what I have uh, read in the books. If there is another term for it, I'm, I apologize. If you if there is something that you prefer, I would much. No, I just never. I've never heard that. What's a what's a genasi? What what's what's a genasi? They are water folk, are they not? Well, genasi in 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 turn are more uh, elemental. I would say. Uh, mm. I think I once crossed paths with a, a fire genasi once, if I remember. Fire? Yes, that one could drink fire. anyone under the table. But besides the point, um, you, you just remind me of that kind, but if you are unsure, that is quite interesting. Um, if we may, where, 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 where do you hear was it from that uh, Janasi that you heard the term that you learned about it? Did you learn about them anywhere else? Uh, in in texts, uh, where I come from, uh, it's it is not unknown the other races to us, though we live very far. Um, but it's they're not common to say. I have not seen one in quite a long time. Nor nor have I. Nor have I. At all. Oh. I, I know the nearest port is about a day or so away. Is that where you're from? Or are you... I, I, I um, come from that way, yeah. Uh, we made port uh, a few days ago and I got off. Ah. And now you are here. Do, would you not stay with whoever it was that you made port with? Um, in most situations, yeah, I've stayed with that ship for about a year now. Um, it's just it, it, uh, it's, it's okay if you do not want to tell. I for one, am, like I said earlier, it's, it is not wise to give all of your secrets at first meeting, so I understand if you do not want to say it's no secret, it's just uh, I've been, I have a mission and I have very little idea of what I'm doing <laughs> with it is the short of it and you have just made my my whole day a lot more interesting I can tell you that Coraline will pop her head over like the balcony on the second star are you right down there I heard of some a minute ago uh, that was just me. Uh, hello little one 
Hi. Uh, and you she'll start the camera down. Oh. As oh, you guys are not, there she having this conversation, <laughs> our, our two other walk up the steps of the library and enter in on Coraline popping her head out from over the banister and yelling. As you guys are munching on your cheese scones, this is what you are immediately <laughs> met with after hearing it was a quiet place. Y- Yaddy, oh, from, no. Yaddy from where he's standing behind the librarian's <laughs> desk kind of looks at Coraline and shrugs like Oh, right. Sorry. Sorry. Dear, sorry. dear child. <laughs> I have energy in the morning. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> She's a bit eager. Can we, a... can we... <laughs> Quiet. Sorry. Sorry. Ugh. Tell She'll us. make a note in her book saying libraries are supposed to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> we can oh, find you a chair in the corner and... Yaddy? We've got a really quiet corner that doesn't involve any yelling as she just kind of like looks over at I feel like we're asking for a table <laughs> at a library. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so there, there is tables that are spread across the library. Some of them a little further off than the others. Those who have been to the library before know that there is a pr- more private area off in the corner of the library. In that kind of more quiet area of the library is a round magical structure that was put there as just, you know, decoration, but also stands in the middle of there, kind of floating and the light bouncing off of it. it. It's not quite known what magic this is, but it's a nice structure in the middle there. That would be the most private area. When, when you mention that you're looking for a quiet place to sit, that's kind of where Yaddy directs you to. There's bookshelves lining the walls. There's a nice fireplace off to one side. Tables and couches for you to sit on. Maps are strewn out as well as books. It looks like people come here frequently to sit and enjoy the peace and quiet. There's a suit of armor on one wall. Kind of like an old armor that maybe you've recognized as the city, uh, the capital city's suit of armors. But this is a very old antique version. The fire is burning. Yaddy has made sure everything is taken care of and it's nice and quiet. No one is back there currently. I plop down on the couch. Like, like kind of <laughs> throw myself sideways to the couch. One leg hanging off on the top. <laughs> Perfect, and I'm yeah. like, yes. This will do. I'll come back for you in a little bit. I'm going to go look for that book i just put a thumbs up so that she can like see it from the other side of the <laughs> <laughs> all right perfect what type of book are you looking for and are you looking for yourself or are you asking yabby uh i'm gonna take a peruse around and see if i can find some history books of the area history books okay yeah are you looking for history books of just this area or just in general uh, I'm looking for both this area and wherever my hometown is. Okay. So, as you're walking around, you don't find any that have any of your hometown or information, but you do find a couple with of histories, you know, history books. As you're looking at the titles, or only a perception check or an investigation. We'll go investigation for this one. Investigation. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's not good. A uh, seven. So as you are looking at the titles of this book, the first one you pull out is A Short History of Dwarves. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I'm so proud and so disappointed at the same time. <laughs> Even just looks at it and goes, wasn't what I'm looking for, but it could be very entertaining and just like walks over to the closest table and just starts reading it. So the, the closest table would be where Talus is currently laid out on the couch. There's a couch across for her if you wanted to sit across. Uh, 
I will go to the one over just to give her a little space and not feel like I'm encroaching on her sleeping. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like man spreading. <laughs> <laughs> you are completely sprawled across this couch. This couch that would normally fit like four or five people you have completely overtaken as you're just laying there, passed out. The other three of you, what are you guys doing while these two are hanging out back in one of the, the rooms? Well, I just saw some two adventurers walking into the library. So I'm going to very quietly now, because it's now been pointed out to me that this place is supposed to be quiet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk over to, because somebody's reading a book, I'm going to walk over to the person that's sleeping, actually. And <laughs> okay. go up to her. <laughs> um, excuse me. I kind of like, and I go <laughs> she's sleeping okay um, I'm going to then turn around look at the girl reading the book see that she looks kind of intimidating and then go into a little corner and I'm going to have a little cat appear out of my coat he scratches can you go wake up that girl on the couch for me? Oh. And my kitty cat is going to go jump on top of the girl that's passed out on the couch. <laughs> so you go into the corner. Poof. There's scratches. You kind of whisper to, hey, can you go go wake, the, wake, wake her up? And scratches makes his way around the little couch and hops up and lays on Talus' chest and starts purring. At the, at the uh, now poof of a cat, do I smell that there's feline in here? You absolutely do. Can I investigate the smell? Like, <laughs> yeah, roll me an investigation check. <laughs> Cersei, where are you doing all of this? Um, <laughs> well, you met, skips, kitty I biscuits. Had... I imagine that she's wandered off and tried to find Yai to start asking about uh, maps. Mm -hmm. 17, by the way. 17? Perfect. Yeah, you immediately know where the, the smell of this cat is coming from, which is a new smell because you have not smelled it before in this library. This is not a library that frequently has visitors as such as cats or felines. And you smell it, and you, you, you hear just... With, with your hearing, a little bit of a, a slow purr. <laughs> uh, since I'm with Cersei, um, a cat just appeared in this library. Um, do you know anything about that? No. <laughs> what? I can guess. Coraline? <laughs> uh, at, at, like, at, the, at the exact, like, no, but I'm already turning around and I'm, like, just beelining it to wherever I smell it and just beelining it to Coraline. <laughs> Perfect. So. She's right behind her Cor Coraline. <laughs> just kind of like, no, you probably just, just see me, like, like, in, a, like, the alleyway of, like, or the aisleway of those library just, books. She's been between aisles of like the aisles of books, like Coraline, Cor Coraline, mm -hmm. Coraline. <laughs> okay. So, as where's you... my child? Where's my child? My son. Um... There's my kid. Wow. I shot my mother. No <laughs> drama. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So, and as you so come around the corner quickly hot on the trail of this feline that you're smelling walk in to what you know is the quietest corner of the library where this this magic artifact kind of sits in the corner spinning there's this, this suit of armor there's bookshelves on the wall and two couches with quite large sofas and a little coffee table in the middle spread out with books and maps you see talus kind of waking up now with a a, a cat loafing on her chest and just staring at her as it's purring contently as a crossword sits raven reading a book which you can easily see yo says the short history of dwarves and 
Coraline standing kind of off, snickering to herself in the corner, thinking it's kind of funny. <laughs> Cersei is hot on the trail as you come upon the scene. The cat continues purring, but that's your approach. Kind of opens its eyes and wiggles an ear. I wiggle an ear back and then immediately look at Coraline. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to be quiet in the library. <laughs> and I I lean down as close to her as I can get without being on. actually you know what? No, I'm gonna like fully like squat down so I'm at her level. <laughs> and just be She's like, five nine, she's not tiny. <laughs> yeah, but you're hiding in a corner. <laughs> That's true. He's six foot seven and That's true. Eight. Never mind. You can see why. <laughs> be accurate. Everyone's <laughs> tiny comparison. Yes, you are all small. Um he <laughs> goes, <laughs> goes down and it's like you're the only one not being quiet. What are you doing? These two people look like they need their best. What what is with the cat? I know it is you. The cat kneads on Talus's chest contently. <laughs> I, just I was it. just curious on why she had a, a, a scratch. Young oh. one, this is the third time now. Not that <laughs> one is going to tell you their secrets at your first meeting them. You must get to know them first. And I get up and I go and grab the cat. <laughs> Be or careful. I'll, 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 well, before I do, I go to reach and then, <clears throat> excuse me, to tell us. As all this is happening, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like hearing whispers over there. I have this cat kneeling on me, <laughs> like looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my this god. Cat needs like to fix its sinuses. <laughs> hey man, I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> oh, perfect. Like how big is this cat? Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry. If you guys have ever seen a Norwegian forest cat, you should look it up. <laughs> Oh, I should have gotten a picture of the Fluffy oh. babies. <laughs> yeah, it is a fairly large cat. Very fluffy as it, as it lays there. And as you pat its head, it kind of closes its eyes and it starts falling asleep as it's purring. I'll put both my hands around it now. Aww. <laughs> so as, as Rad walks over, he just sees Talos pat, pat, snug as she just kind of holds it there. I love how Talos just accepts that there's cat now. <laughs> Across from her is, is Raiden, who I'm sure has seen this happening. She I'm like going, pops I'm the, like a, her head up, looks, sees this giant cat on Talos and goes, I've seen weirder. Goes back to her short history of doors. <laughs> as, as you say that, go back to your book. The, the shadow of Radford just walking over and, and be like okay as Talos just encompasses the cat you know I, I was going to ask if I wanted or if she wanted to have me remove the cat but I think I think she is okay <laughs> and I go and turn, up, turn to look at Raven and be like she's fine right she had a rough night well i i can smell it but oh. <laughs> <laughs> and a rough morning yeah. maybe that is what they smell um she's fine right i like look back over at and goes while you look I'm over so you can just hear me go like <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think she's good. So she's gonna kind of like peek over and go, greasy eggs, that'll fix it. It's a quick cure. <laughs> greasy eggs? 
Yeah, we both, we both turn back at Cersei. Is she sick? I'm curious. What is... Um, it's a very <laughs> special kind of sickness that adults have. Um, when they do stupid She's things. She's hungover, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Am I near somebody? Can I whisper to them? What's hungover? <laughs> Yeah, you're close enough to Cersei when she walks up that you probably could lean over and be like, what's on over? (laughs) It's when you drink too much alcohol. It makes your brain and stomach funny. Okay. Greasy eggs and bacon, that's how you gotta say it. You know, for a half second, I thought you were gonna say, what's alcohol? (laughs) (laughs) I'm not gonna lie. I make make notes as in Coraline and it says alcohol question (laughs) mark. Oh, this is going to be fun. Um, for <laughs> reference, as I see someone asking in the chat, how old are all of your characters about? You don't have to give their exact age. She looks on... Coraline looks on the younger side between, like, late teens, early 20s. I knew it. <laughs> she is baby. She is baby. She's very round face. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> Thirsty looks mid twenties, uh, not mid twenties, early twenties. Mm-hmm. Raven looks like she could potentially have been Coraline's thirty-something-year-old sister. <laughs> <laughs> and like, looks at her kind of in that way of like, I don't know if I want to corrupt you. <laughs> but, like, keep safe. Um, how old does Talus look lying here? With this cat? (laughs) Like, uh, I would say late 20s, early 30s. Perfect. Rutherford, it's a little harder to tell. Yeah. Do do you you want me to say his name? It is totally up to you. It's your character. It's hard to tell because of the fur. Uh, You can kind of hear in his uh, words of wisdom to some that will not be named. (laughs) He's a, uh, like 109-ish, give or take. Yeah. He has a grovel in his voice. Vocal cords <laughs> well used throughout the years as he's traveled. But he's not old. He is not <laughs> old. Well, so as Coraline <laughs> leans over to Cersei, what's alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> what's alcohol? <laughs> you're not allowed to have it. <laughs> and you're not allowed I, to have coffee. I can definitely have coffee. It's just my tea. Can. I had that explained. And yeah. at that, Red immediately turns around and just is like, do not give her coffee. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're not allowed to have it. <laughs> you, you don't need coffee. You are so energetic. So, yeah. <laughs> as, as you all are sitting around having this conversation of if Coraline is allowed to have coffee or not, <laughs> along with your alcohol. Along with my alcohol. Yeah. As you all just a are sitting more. around. Just let, me, just let me drink. <laughs> as you all are sitting around having this conversation, that magical aura that stands off to the corner suddenly starts pulsating. Something you've never seen it do, or any... It's, Rutherford, you have never seen this happen with any of these in another library. As it starts pulsating and pulsating a wave of sickly green magic shoots off. Kind of waves over you all, but there is no effect. Oh. And then... That's not normal. What's that? This can is, I this go is, towards it? You can absolutely go no. towards it. <laughs> I'm not going to stop you. You can absolutely... <laughs> No! How close are you walking towards it? It's about 30 feet from me right now. Well, I need to be able to touch it to identify it. You. <laughs> so as we... you start walking closer, you hear a book fall off of a shelf. There's no one standing there. And then a couple of other books start falling off the shelves and landing on the floors. 
From where we're standing, can we see if there are any particular kinds of books? They, from where you're standing, you cannot, but they seem to be falling off of random points in the shelves, shelves things that may not be the same kind of books, different, different categories. And then as Coraline starts walking closer and closer to this apparatus, the armor off to the corner starts creaking and moving of its own will. I need you all to roll initiative. Shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was about to ask if this is similar to anything that Coraline Yo, has okay. been through. Yeah, no. This is something Books? none of you have ever seen before. Okay. Okay. No. Come on, this is my first dice roll. <laughs> Whenever I think of moving armor, I think of uh, the Harry Potter oh. on PlayStation 1. Right. <laughs> if you guys want to throw your initiatives just in the Telus chat, I'll grab them there. That's easier for you. Hoping you girls rolled better than I did. I literally rolled a one. Oh, no. Oh, I don't know oh. how I. <laughs> Coraline. Which is a grand total of. We're loving that. All right, so you guys. and here is where we're going to take our first break and then come back and start our combat. Whoa! So, okay. Okay, so okay. we're going to take 10 minutes, you guys. If you want to go to the restroom, go get your drinks, go get some snacks, remember to get your water. I'm going to get some oh, coffee because no. um, I'm allowed to have that. Same. Um, Same. I'm having coffee. <laughs> Everyone get your coffee and your water. During the break, when we come back, we're actually going to have something very cool and special that Din has made for future streams. So you're gonna want to see it. You want to see it. You want to see it.
Give me just a second here, guys, but we're back. We're live. I just am getting a camera fixed here real quick. <laughs> How did you guys like that intro? Woo! How did you guys like that? <laughs> So good. Made by our wonderful Den Studios here. I'm not crying. <laughs> Den, tell them a little bit about that. Why I get this camera fixed real quick. <laughs> um, I put about two weeks work worth of work drawing everyone's character and everything for one of my finals for school. Um, and asked my professor, I was like, yo, can I make this also for a personal project? He's like, yeah, I would love it. So I worked about two weeks. Never worked in the software before, drew absolutely everyone in about 6 to 12 hours on each image and worked hard to get it done and it's beautiful. The music is from Arcane Anthems, uh, so also big thanks to him, but yeah. <laughs> also, before we go back into our actual game with these initiatives that everyone ruled, let us wish Giga Girl Productions, our beautiful Abby and player of Cersei, yeah. a very happy birthday tomorrow. Abby, <laughs> oh, it's my annual aging ceremony. It is your annual happy aging ceremony. Yay! Happy birthday! Yay. To you. <laughs> happy birthday. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Also, I'll give you a more in depth full like song just to you personally after this session. Oh. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> I will say Din worked extremely hard on getting that done. Uh, we had some tech issues last week which is why we were not able to stream last week which was rough but it gave our lovely Din here time to be able to get yeah. it done and it looks beautiful and it's wonderful and I can't wait. I don't know if Wes is in the chat or not. Probably not. I think he's oh he's seen it. He's but oh, <laughs> shout out to our team yeah. and for the beautiful music that was in the background. So without further ado, we did roll some initiatives. So before our break, before the amazing intro, all of you had just gathered and we're chatting in the quiet common area. As you all were chatting, the cat was holding Talus down and snuggling with her. And Rad was having a conversation with Kor. The apparatus in the corner, which you recognize as being a type of shield for the library in Kibben, started pulsating with energy, which has never happened in a library or anywhere else that you had seen before. This is something new entirely. The sickly green aura came out and in a wave surged out of this apparatus into the library and maybe further. As you were standing there, as Coraline was making her way to walk towards this aura to touch it, the knight of the, the suit of armor in the corner started moving and books had fallen off of the shelves. As you've approached, this knight slowly and creaking from the ages of dust and rust that have spread across, steps down from the platform that he was currently attached to and draws up a sword and stands there. The books that had fallen, a couple of them start to shiver and shake and move as a couple of them fly into the air above you, starting to open and flap around and fly around. Talus, you have first initiative. What are you going to do? Oh, no. Uh... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Where is it in respect to where we are? Meaning, like, is it on the other side of the couch? Like, did it see me? It has not seen you yet. It is Coraline is right up next to the armor itself. <laughs> and then the books that are flying around are now above you, but are not attacking anyone yet. The armor has raised its old rusted sword to Coraline. You are still laying on the couch with the cat on your chest. Oh, the cat. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you like to do? Eat the cat. Eat the uh, cat. <laughs> can I, like, like, very quickly put the cat on the couch and then sneak around the couch? Yeah, absolutely. Um, are you rolling? Are you being stealthy as you do it? Yes. Okay, perfect. So roll me uh, stealth. Okay. 
14. 14? Perfect. Yeah, you let me let me see here. Yeah, absolutely. You absolutely come stealthily around the couches. You are currently out of view and none of them seem to acknowledge or see you at the moment. I actually rolled really poorly, but my, <laughs> my still- <laughs> Good. Um, rogues man rogues <laughs> true <laughs> all right what would you like to do anything else i yes i am going to yeah so can i ready a, a stick attack is Absolutely. that a thing yeah i don't I, all right so are you wanting like? you're wanting to ready an action yeah, because I don't know if it's aggressive towards Coraline, but if I see it about to swing, is that like a thing where I? Yeah, can, like, you can absolutely ready an action. Uh, what ready- are you wanting to do if you for your ready action? So if it swings at Coraline, what would you like to, that reaction to be? I would like to sneak attack it. Sneak attack it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so if you hand. see it swing at Coraline before your next turn, you, you the action you'll take it immediately. Okay. Okay. So your action is held. Uh, is there anything else that you can do? Uh, not at the moment. Perfect. Okay. Then we move on to Rad. Rad, you are currently standing. Oh, I'm taking the okay. hide act. I guess I am already doing hide action. Mm-hmm. You're, you already stealth? Yep. Okay. Because that's like, it says hide action as a bonus action, Um, but I already. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So you're good. Okay. Rad, you are next in the initiative order. You are currently standing there watching a old suit of armor raise its sword to Coraline as these books are now in the air. What would you like to do? Uh, I run towards it and take out my giant ass great sword from my back that I forgot to mention I had. <laughs> I was going to say, and... for, for rectification's sake, ha. Um, <laughs> ha. Um, I see what you did there. Um, Rad, Rad does have a large great sword. Yeah, he does. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and take that out and see if. I can parry that um, okay. swing down to protect Coraline. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so are you hitting it? Or are you swinging also at the sword? Um, I mean, if it, it's it's like coming down like this. It kind of has it raised just to like in a defensive stance where it could s- potentially swing at her. Currently, it is just raised. Hmm. There's a really big part of me that does not want to actually harm the magic item because artifact. Um, can I like go up and just like prepare like defensively? Yeah, you want to defend. Yeah, perfect. So you just want to stand in front, kind of just in case it prepares to swing, be able to block that. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Like okay. as, as soon as it starts to do anything, mm-hmm. if it's anything violent towards us at all, I'm just ready. Right, right in front of Coraline. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, not a problem. Okay, so you are currently standing in front of it. Next on our initiative order is Abby. So, Cersei, you've just watched as Talus disappeared off the couch. You didn't see her move. Hiding now stealthily. You've watched as a suit of armor and an aura radiate off of this object and spread out. And now Rad is in front of Coraline, holding a, a great sword, preparing to down it in case something happens. What would you like to do? There's books floating above you. Um, I'm going to cast Bless. Okay, great. What does it do? Um, Bless. Uh, three creatures of my choice within range. I assume everyone probably is. Mm-hmm. They are. target makes an attack roll or saving throw before the spell ends. The target can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to the attack or saving throw. Um, so Cersei is going to cast Bless um, upon Rad because she sees him moving. Perfect. Uh, she's going to cast it upon Coraline because Squish. Squish Child. Because Squish Child. <laughs> 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 and since she saw um, Talus move, mm-hmm. uh, disappear. She figures that she's doing something, so she's going to bless her as well. Perfect. Um, and does it include yourself or just those three? Just those three. That's all I can do. Three. Perfect. So Talus, Rad, and Coraline are all blessed. Perfect. All right. Um, any bonus actions or anything else? Any movement you'd like to take? Nope. <laughs> 
perfect. Okay, perfect. All right, you are standing off. Not what I can tell. Um, the rest of you see as as Rad stands in front of this armor. See Cersei, kind of gather their nerves and and what does it look like when you cast bless? What, um, Cersei's going to kind of grab at her amulet and kind of just hold it and just kind of like quick point off at them like you you you. <laughs> <laughs> You and you and you. Perfect. Okay. I have mentioned just a little bit of like an electrical spark kind of just at the very tip, just a little like almost like static electricity kind of zip, zip, zip. <laughs> Perfect. So as you cast Bless and Rad, the armor brings down a swing to attempt to try to hit the sword out of his hand. So let us see. Do, 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 do. What is... Let's see. Your AC is 16, but you have... So bless, it's just on saving throws and attack rolls, correct? It does not change AC yeah, or anything like that. Okay, perfect. I just wanted to make sure. So, Rad, as this armor brings down this rusty sword and goes to hit you, it nicks you a little bit as as you're standing there because he also rolled a 16. So with that sword that comes down, he's, you are going to take two damage as he just nicks you just enough to be annoying Ah, no, <laughs> not the dude. Not the oh no, what was me? Two points. Okay, you only took two points um, of damage. He sort of like, kind of like, uh, oh, there's a word for it. Snarl. He snarls at it. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> My brain. Um, is that thought bubble there. Uh, he's like snarls in it, but he holds steady. Okay, you snarl at it as it doesn't react. Above you. One of the books that is floating around makes its way down to quickly try to dive bomb Cersei as she's standing there. So Cersei, it's going to, it's, it's going to, as you look up, you can kind of hear the swish of pages if someone was to run their finger over a book quickly. And it completely overshoots and misses you entirely as this book flies across and over you. As you look up, you wow. see that there's not one, but three books that are currently floating in the air. Yeesh. All right. From there, it is Val's turn. So what is Raven wanting to do? Uh, noticing how there's lovely flying books in a suit of armor, she quickly <laughs> grabs her rapier and her shield and takes up position right beside Cersei and goes, you bring him down here. I hit him hard. I basically <laughs> taking defensive like positioning in front of Cersei. Perfect. All right. So currently we have Rad, who is currently standing in front of Coraline, has taken two points of damage. This book has flown down and, and tried to hit Cersei <laughs> as it overshot. Raven and Cersei are currently standing together. Is there anything else that you'd like to do? I am just ready to swing at any books that come flying at us. Perfect. All right. So then we come to Coraline, who is standing behind Rad as he is in a, def in a defensive position, holding that sword with a, a little nick just to his chest. Uh, Coraline is going to assess the situation, see the suit of armor looking the craziest out of everything, and she is going to have her book that she carries with her everywhere that you've seen her write into multiple times have it like float kind of in front of her and out from it a petrified eye of a newt will emerge and she'll grasp it and crumple it in her hand and she'll cast hex onto the suit of armor and then as her action um she's gonna flip another page it's gonna flip kind of an emotionless air and a leather strap bookmark is gonna appear she's gonna cast mage armor on herself perfect how much is your so armor? her how much ace? Your, yep. How much does it go? My AC now is fifteen. It was twelve. But we made it to All right. <laughs> we need it to be fifteen. Baby, baby. Fifteen. 10. I'm squishy. Okay, and then and, uh, if you want to mind, read off what hex does. Hex, um, it's a concentration spell. Uh, you place a curse on a creature, and you can that uh, you can see within range until the spend ends. You'll deal an extra one d six necrotic damage to that target whenever you hit it with an attack. Also, choose one ability. When you cast that spell, the target has the advantage on that ability check made with that chosen ability. And I think 
I want it to have disadvantage on strength checks. Disadvantage on strength checks. Perfect. I will make a note of it. How long does it have disadvantage for? It has, it's up to one hour. Okay. Actually, because I'm a warlock and I cast everything now at third level, mm -hmm. I can have it last for up to eight hours. <laughs> is it a saving throw at all? Ooh. Or is it he just hexed? It is just, it, there's no saving throw for you. It's just immediately a thing. Okay. Unless a remove curse is cast on that target. Okay, perfect. All right, he is hexed. So he watches. So Rutherford, as you take that little bit of a nick from the sword, you watch as the small, young child behind you quickly <laughs> casts out of her book, and the armor kind of shifts for a second, like he's trying to like knock it off, and then takes up a defensive position again to take another swing. Um, can I like back away, or will I get out of his melee range and like get hit? You can absolutely back out of his way. The way that he is currently, rather standing in front of you, so he does not get an attack of opportunity. You're just able to back away. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I will. I will move my movement away from the situation, but I still. Good. Oh, I can. Yeah, it's a ninety foot range, so I will back up my thirty feet away from people. <laughs> or fifteen. I don't know how big this room is. Dan, I believe you're. You do have instinctual dodge. Okay, cool. You, I think you just have a D six, if I'm correct. I think you as I think you do. Uh, I think I added it into when I made the thing. Um, okay, perfect. So from above you, as you are backing away, Coraline, a book above you kind of radars in on you, and you're going to see it get closer and closer. And it's going to slam against you for two points of damage. <laughs> All right. And as you okay, take those two points of damage, it smacks you as it flies back up. All right. Ouch. <laughs> Perfect. It flies back up and we are at the top of the round. So, Talus, what would you like to do? Now I'm going to see that the suit of armor is a good one. I would like to sneak attack it. Okay, perfect. All right, so you want to sneak attack on the armor. So let me see. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. You're just fine. Shout out to our chat. I hope you guys are having a wonderful time. <laughs> you guys have been a fantastic audience. We appreciate you guys coming and watching the first session. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? 20 hits. 20? 20 absolutely hits. Go ahead. Roll your damage. Nineteen. Nineteen. Goodness. Perfect. All right. So as you, what are you hitting it with as you sneak attack? Uh, my rapier. Your rapier? Perfect. Okay. So as you watch Coraline quickly take her movement back, get hit in the face with a book. And Rad taking that little nick to the chest as this had swung and then readied itself again. You sneak attack and come around the side. Your training, your stealth has come in handy as you hit it in the side and knock it a little off balance as it falls a little and then shifts as it creaks back to standing up and then draws his sword again. He's looking a little damaged though now. You, He has a dent in the side of that chest plate. Give us a good hit. Perfect. All right. You did roll your bless, right? Pardon? Did you roll your bonus? You did roll bless, right? Did I roll my bonus? You're, you're bless. blessed because bless. you were blessed by Cersei. Oh, no. Go ahead. Go I, ahead. I'll let you roll it. What is it? What What? what, what plus, is it for? Oh, uh, so you roll 1d4, correct? So roll a d4 and add that damage. Two. Two. Perfect. So that was 21 points of damage. Fantastic. Perfect. All right. <laughs> so as it takes that dent in the side of its armor and shifts... A couple of feet away from Rad with the 
impact. Yes. Uh, I would also like to do bonus action disengage. Yep. Perfect. Disengage. Are you taking your full movement speed back or are you just walking a couple feet? How far are you moving back? Just far enough so I'm out of its okay, swing range. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. So you disengage, take a couple feet back. Rad, this armor now has a dent in the side of its chest plate as you watch Talus come up out of seemingly nowhere and hit it in the side, denting it as it stumbles a little bit. What would you like to do? Um... Well, seeing as how it already attacked me, and I have <laughs> full privilege now, too, I'm just going to full blown just whack okay. and attack it. Okay, roll the hit. Head. And you have okay. a d4, to add, d4 to, to add to it, so roll a d4 as well as your attack. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 25. 25? 25 absolutely hits. So what, you, what kind of damage are you dealing to the suit of armor? Um, it's slashing damage and it's 2d6. Let me grab my lucky d6s that I totally didn't grab earlier. <laughs> okay. Uh, 2d6. 11. 11? Okay. Perfect. Let's see here. All right. Perfect. All right, so you takes 11 damage as you bring up your great sword, seeing as how it's taken a dent to the plate. As you kind of have that realization of, oh, I can attack and hit this thing hard now. As you raise your great sword up over your head and just in a f one sweeping motion, hit it again as it crunches a little in and on itself, and that sound of metallic is just echoing through the sound of this library. Yaddy is nowhere in sight and you do not see him. But you that, that ringing echo just throughout the library. From there on, you see as these books are still floating above, you haven't seen anything else. Cersei is your turn. Um, our... Are any of the books within range of me for like a sword swing? For a sword swing, there's one. They're about 15 feet up. About 15 feet up? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. As long as it's not a concentration, I can cast another spell, right? Yep. Okay. Um, since they're a little out of reach mm -hmm. for me and my sword, I'm going to cast another spell. Because I'm good at that in theory. <laughs> I lost it. Where did you go? Mm -hmm. A spiritual weapon. I know it's here somewhere. I found you. You were just fine. <laughs> Rude. I'm going to cast spiritual weapon. Um. Shout out to our mods in the chat. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. I just I want to let you know that I do see you and I appreciate you all. <laughs> what 19 hit 19 does hit so are you yeah. you're aiming for one of the books correct yeah one of the books okay which book are you aiming I don't for take There's a whack three at three that are currently in the air um let's go at the one that try to take a swipe at me let's go a little vengeful Perfect. Okay. Yeah, so it does hit. How much damage does your spiritual weapon do? 1d8 plus spell casting ability. Ooh, okay, a 6 plus 4. That's going to be 10. 10? Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Not the books. Not the books. <laughs> Is Core actually saying that? It's rude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, Core would be like that, too. She's like... <laughs> She got hit by one, but she's still not going to go for it. She's like, <laughs> just not the books, not the books, not the books. <laughs> the Perfect. Okay, so as you hit this book, it f falls a little and hits the ground, but then starts floating back up. It is about five feet off the ground now. Is there anything else that you'd like to do? Um, as a bonus action, I can move it and repeat an attack. Okay. Perfect. Go right ahead. So I'm a, I'm gonna do that. Oh, 
I don't know if that's going to hit. Um, nine. Nine. It does not hit. So as mm-hmm. you watch the spirit, what does your spiritual weapon look like? Right. My spiritual weapon, um, it is a trident. Of it's Her spiritual weapon is a bright white trident and the, the prongs of the trident kind of crackle and everything like uh, lightning bolts. Perfect. And she's kind of just like trident fishing at these things in the Perfect. air. So and as I- you <laughs> hit that one book, you're feeling a little confident. Cersei stands a little tall. She's like, yes, I hit one. And brings it back and throws it again at this other book. Just barely misses as it's able to perceive what she's doing and swoops a little and then continues to float there. And ah. then as you look fishing. over, you see this armor starting to creak and move as it is trying to take another swipe at Rad as it doesn't appreciate that constant attack. So it's going to... Neither do I! Well, <laughs> have you tried talking to it yet? Um... <laughs> Did you ask it how it feels? Did you ask it how it felt? Because, like, I don't think you did. Um, let's see. There, there, young piece of armor. We are not here to harm you. <laughs> As you continue to hit I don't know what accent that was because that wasn't mine. That was not. Okay, so. There's another person in that body. What up? Wow. What is my other character? <laughs> okay, so. It is going to hit you. As it sw- as it swings down, I mean, as it's taken the sandwich, as it kind of reels back and brings that sword, it's going to hit you square in the chest and slice across it for eight damage. Ah! <laughs> and as it kind of stands there, it, it takes a couple of steps back and then makes its way towards where core has disengaged uh, has walked to <laughs> from there okay. that book that Cersei missed is going to kind of flap a little and then the room starts slowly getting darker and darker and darker as you see dark smoke start emanating from where these pages are and as it flips it casts darkness and anyone within 15 feet of said book is just encompassed in darkness as you watch the room fill with this black fog. Oh, no. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> so now you oh, have dear. disadvantage on attacks that require sight. Just so you know. Why? Wow. Was there a book near the arm? What's that? Was this book near the armor? It was. So I'm blind? You are blinded. So currently, yeah. the room is completely filled <laughs> with darkness as this emanating black fog has come out of these pages. This book as it starts flipping its pages rapidly. Val, is your turn. What would Raven like to do? Uh, am I totally encompassed in darkness that I can't see anything? Yes. You can hear. I'm just. You can't see. I'm just gonna yell out. What did we ever do to any of you? <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried no. talking to it? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm skipping the talking, but I'm going straight to yelling. So, it's fantastic. So currently, there are three books in the air. One of them had taken substantial damage from Cersei. And then the suit of armor currently was making its way towards Coraline last you saw it. And the book is currently emanating smoke above, but you cannot see it. Uh, did the suit of armor like go past me to where I would make a attack opportunity at all? Or is that... No. It hit it went... you and then just kind of stepped back. And then... Ah, so okay. It did not... So I can't see anything. You cannot. You have disadvantage on sites on attacks that require sight, but you can still attack. You just have disadvantage. Uh, okay, well, and I'm going to try and shoot at the book that's emanating uh, lovely darkness with an <laughs> Eldritch Blast because I'm a warlock. 
Ooh. Hey. Okay. So it was above you last you saw it. So you were only two attacks. You take the lowest of the two because that's disadvantage. Uh, lowest would be a 16. A 16? Yeah. Yep. Okay, perfect. How much damage does an Eldric Blast do? For our uh, it does a 1d10 and I got a 9. Perfect. Okay, so as you watched this this book that Cersei had missed start emanating this black smoke and this black inky fog and encompass all of your party members and yourself and the other armor that is attacking, you're like, ugh. Oh. As you look up and you think that you remember where that book was as you shoot upwards with an Eldritch Blast and you hear it hit the ground and then nothing but the darkness stays. Damn it! <laughs> cool, 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 cool. It was a good hit, though. Good, good hit. That's good. Nice. Okay, perfect. All right. So from there, we have... So the, 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 the books are kind of flopping around above you. And the one that Cersei hit is kind of flopping about trying to find somebody else to hit. However, it sees nothing, and you just hear it fluttering about <laughs> as we move to Cor's turn. <laughs> awesome. Oh. oh, is it me? Oh, yes, okay. Beautiful. My turn? <laughs> oh, right. so I thought you said it was you somebody froze. else's turn. I was uh, you like, were sitting so still, I thought you had frozen. Right. I was like... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're we lost her. Time, we beautiful. lost her. So... The last thing I saw was the armor coming towards me, right? And then yes. everything became the darkness. All right. Um, my little glowing book that's in front of me, kind of floating. Mm -hmm. I Even in darkness, if it's like magical light, you can kind of see it. So I know my book is still there. So I'm not going to panic. I don't, I don't like darkness. I am going to summon two turquoise balls of eldritch arcana saying what am i gonna say <laughs> what am i gonna say <laughs> Peter's and i'm gonna send my two eldritch blasts and i'm gonna send them in the direction of that armor perfect all right she speaks in sylvan whenever she casts magic by the way perfect so, cool. if anybody speaks sylvan that'd be me <laughs> right, so it's a disadvantage right it is a disadvantage so you roll me two d20s I did. Lowest. My lowest was a seven plus seven, so fourteen. <laughs> fourteen, perfect. And you're you're going to hit the armor. I am. Okay. Awesome. All right. No, so you're that not. Is... You're not. I asked okay. if you were going to. If that's who you're aiming at. Sorry, I missed. Um, yeah. So you you. My first shoot ball off. misses. Your first. My first misses. ball misses. Yeah, you shoot off that first one, and you think you're able to see just a glint off of this old rust armor, but you can't quite tell in this darkness. Go ahead and see if the other one hits. No, that was a natural one. You rolled a one. <laughs> I rolled a one and okay. a sixteen. My other ones were. I was like a nineteen of my other one and a oh, sixteen shit. on this one. So but... with that natural one, oh, as no. you, as as you think that you saw that armor, and you, it's glinting a little bit, you saw it. You Sorry, Red. It flying past, but you don't. It, it, that that glint off of Rad's sword is actually what you saw. And it goes straight past Rad, barely missing, singeing oh, a little bit God. of fur on his face as it hits the back wall of the library and starts singeing and burning through it. It does not make it all the way through, but you can smell the wood burning as you hit that back wall. What way are you aiming? Sorry. And she's just going to back up again, 30 feet, hopefully out of this. Uh, so you back up. This, I back up. Yep, you back up and you're out of darkness. And all you see surrounding you is where you presume your party members would be in a dark, inky fog. But you are out. Yeah. Okay. From there, you, you, you one of the books, you can hear it in the fog as it's fluttering about but it cannot see anything as it also does not find anyone. And we move to the top of the round. Talus, it's your turn. Okay. Okay. So. I am going to. 
I think I'm just going to go for the armored head. Like, okay, perfect. And go for him. Disadvantage, right? A disadvantage, yes. You are currently still in darkness. Does 20 hit? Um, yes, that's what I rolled before, so yes. <laughs> Yes, a 20 hits. Is that what you rolled with disadvantage as a 20? I, I rolled uh, 12. No, not in that 20. It was 12 and 14. I took 12. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that. So. And you're aiming at the suit of armor? Yes. <laughs> perfect. All right, so roll your, roll your damage for me. 12. How much? 12. Perfect. Boys. Oh, right. Perfect. So, as you, what, what what are you trying to hit it with? Like what or how? How are you trying to hit it? I guess I'm trying to poke his head off. <laughs> hmm. Okay. This sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. This sounds like okay. a All right. Like, yeah. I like I like a realized bomb. what I was saying. <laughs> okay. All right. So, as you in the dark saw core reach you or almost, almost take out your colleague as you saw just a quick glimpse of him in the dark as it passed his face and a glint off of that armor you had looked and seen exactly where it was and you were able to run up and quickly stab it through the head and how do you want to do it <laughs> you're still in darkness right, so no one will see, see you do this we still can't. Boring, you, but... Nobody can see this, but all they hear is a clang of the armor as your metal impacts with it, and you take its head off. How would you like to do it? <laughs> okay. uh, I go in, and I pop the the helmet off, mm -hmm. and then I think, hmm, oddly satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to have to draw... A new rapier <laughs> helmets through it. So, yeah. that, so as you kind of pull back, all the surrounding yeah. party members just hear as armor clangs to the ground noisily. You okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sound off the feel all right. <laughs> I'll say, I, I took its head off. <laughs> Usually worrisome. Good in this case. <laughs> In this case, because it takes care of that problem, I am <laughs> Talus is in shock, a bit of shock. <laughs> no, this will be impactful in the future. And then, as <laughs> that happens, as Rutherford hears this clamoring of armor close to his like close to the side, we moved on to him. What would you like to do? It is currently still foggy darkness. There are three books, as far as you are aware, still floating above you. Um. Are they within reach at all? You don't know. You don't know? Nope. Uh, can... Uh, do I remember, like, like, like if I can remember where one of them is, can I... Yeah, roll me a d20, just flat, and we'll see if you can figure out where they are. Okay, a straight one? Yep, just straight. Okay, that's a 14. Perfect. All right, yeah, you heard one of them flapping around off to the left side of you as it was trying to find one of you to hit. Okay. Um. Uh, I'm trying to think which one. I'm going to hit it with a witch bolt. Oh. All right. Because that's their... the only one I have prepared right now that's useful. Because I am not. You have about... a witch bolt. For people that oh, don't I'm know. I'm not about to burn a book. For people that don't know what witch bolt does, what does it do? Read it off for me. Uh, just the whole thing. Yep. Um, or whatever is relevant to right now. Uh, basically a giant crackling blue energy beam lance thing just whoosh, and hits it like lightning. Um, uh, and takes. 1d12 lightning damage and then on each turn for the duration can use action to deal 1d12 lightning damage again and what level are you casting at um 
first level? First yeah, level. first level. Okay, perfect. So, first level. Um, is it instantaneous, or do you have to roll the hit? Uh, I have to roll the hit. Okay, roll to see if you hit it for me. We'll okay. see if you can hit this book. Okay, plus four is an 18. 18, yeah, you do. So what is, what is your damage for it? 1d12. Okay, I have roll to, me a d12. I have to find a d12 because I forgot what they look like. Hold on. You're just fine. It looks like a dodecahedron. They're I know. They're d20 imposters. <laughs> They're d20 imposters. That's, that's cocked. Hold on. Yeah, they are d20 imposters. Okay. They lie like a rogue. It's an eight. <laughs> Eight? Perfect. All right. Sorry, so... I, I had to roll again because it got cocked. Yeah, you're just fine. So as you try to recall where you had seen this book or heard this flapping, you're like, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, and you shoot off a witch's bolt from your fingertips as they crackle in the darkness. And you hear it just down as you hear it clatter across the floor. And you don't hear it anymore. Perfect. All right. So... After that. I take my movement towards where I heard it fall down. Yeah, absolutely. Not tumbling over anybody. Yeah, you uh, you yeah. kind of kick it because it's still dark. So you kick the book. It doesn't seem to be moving. Cool. So it's all you wanted to do. Yes. Perfect. All right. So we then come to Cersei. Um. Your spiritual Cersei... weapon is still up, correct? Yeah, my spiritual weapon is still up. Um. Oh, I had a default. Thing. Would there be any like within touching range, like any sort of uh, like furniture or anything? You know where the couches were, as well as the table, so you might be able to figure it out and feel around and find them. Is that what you're looking for? E. You know what? She's just going to actually um. Let's just do it this way. She's going to grab at her uh. Amulet again and try to cast light on it. Okay. What does light um, do? Light until the spell ends. The object that I touch that's no bigger than 10 feet in any dimension sheds bright light for 20 feet radius and dim light for an additional 20 feet. Okay. The, li the light can be colored as you like and completely covering the object with something will block the light. Okay. Let me double check. Spell ends if I cast it again. Let's see here. Okay. All right, I don't perfect. know if it will break through darkness, but That's I had to double check. Um, so if it was not magical light, it would not. But because this is magical light, it does. So what color is your your light that you cast? It's going to be a very pale sea foam. Basically, I'm just going to light up like the weirdest looking lightning bug. <laughs> <laughs> It's right. a little beacon, like, okay. <laughs> Perfect. So, from within this darkness, your party members that are in range are able to see just this little bit of blue start shimmering and then spread out into this area. You said it's 10 feet? 20. And 20. then it's 20 bright light and then extra 20 dim Okay, perfect. Light. So, yeah, everyone is in range then. So, as this yeah. blue light kind of emanates. You see Cersei standing there as she casts it and it just radiates off of her. Mm -hmm. Angelic is it a concentration spell? Yeah. Is it a concentration it spell? Oh, okay, cool. I was just wondering. It I forgot have... I had bless. <laughs> yeah, it does not have a little C. It does not have a little C. It Remember you are blessed. Yeah. I have bless. Yeah. <laughs> what? Count your blessings. Um, as a bonus action. <laughs> I would like to try to strike down a, another book. Okay, perfect. And you can see one in view, and then there's the one above that is still casting the darkness down. Yeah, I'm going to try to shoot at the darkness one. Perfect. All right. So it's floating above, as you can still see the inky darkness still coming down from it. Gosh, diddly. <laughs> That's going to be an eight. Okay, <laughs> so that it's not, not going to hit. So that is not hit as... It's I hear this light right on my chest. It's a little hard. <laughs> it's a, just like flash banged myself a little bit and then try to throw something. <laughs> it's a little difficult. <laughs> okay, so you were using your spiritual weapon again to try to hit it, correct? Yeah, as the bonus. It's just okay. Gonna... Yeah, as, as you try to hit it again, you toss it up and it just is a little bit to one side as it just misses. 
She's gonna blink like, ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and ooh. you got big eyes, guys. This is big. Like, oh, perfect. <laughs> Right, Depth perception. As you are standing there, <laughs> Talus standing over this armor with its head off, <laughs> it starts to reanimate as it stands up, and its chest cavity opens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> oh no! Um, let me look at Talus's character sheet real quick. Let's see. Oh no! You see? no. Oh. Perfect. Oh no. <laughs> oh no 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 no. Do 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 do. Oh dear. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, perfect. Let me see here. Do, 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 do. Oh. Now the armor is headless, right? It is headless. <laughs> um, it is headless. The armor is headless. <laughs> so, <laughs> as this chest cavity opens, it opens and you are dragged into the armor itself as you are now and it shuts as you are now trapped in this armor which is now headless however the party members can see what just happened since there is light so as you are trapped in this armor and it ends its turn (laughs) what no how is that a thing we don't like this what's wrong (laughs) it's fine it's fine Ah! All right. They don't like this. Ah! From there, the darkness. Blade just wanted to talk to it. <laughs> From there, the darkness keeps going, and we move on to uh, Raven, who has stepped out of this darkness. Uh, well, remembering that she's like, right, I have more than one blast that I can shoot at these darn freaking books. <laughs> uh, so there's one un, still producing darkness then. Yep, there's one producing darkness, there's one still in the darkness, there's one on the ground that Rad kicked. Okay. All of a sudden she's like, right, I have two beams of this, and shoots two electric blasts at the one producing darkness. Perfect. Uh, is it instantaneous, or do you need to roll a hit? Uh, roll to hit, so... Perfect, roll hit. First probably. one is an 18 to hit. Perfect, okay, that hits. And the second one is a 19 to hit. Perfect, both hit. So a total of beautiful uh, 13 damage. 13 damage. Perfect. All right. What color are your Eldritch Blasts? She just like gunslingers it out with like her both her shield and her like rapier. And all you see is like beautiful red streaks that the exact same color as her hair. Perfect. So as you kind of flick out these beautifully colored red streaks come you hit the book and it instantly disintegrates with the amount of damage there's not even anything left of it as the darkness slowly starts disintegrating and you can see clearly around you and that book is dead so the only one left is the one that is currently floating around <laughs> which is it's, it's turning and then the armor that's now swallowed <laughs> Yeah, uh, and then, and then I'm gonna use my oh, movement. I'm gonna just oh. nod at Cersei and be like, "Good job!" and like head towards the uh, armor. Okay, I just swallowed yeah. my friend. <laughs> All right, so the other hey, book. Talus. <laughs> Say Talus. Hey, Talus. <laughs> the other book, seeing Raven start making her way over to the armor, is going to go in and try to hit you in the face, but it misses terribly and overshoots as it just completely flies past your hair, kind of. Moving and, and blowing a little bit. That's about it. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Core, it is your turn, Nat. Uh, well, seeing that Talus has uh, been swallowed, I don't want to try to hit it with anything super, like, hit anything with force. So I am instead going to... You hear these kind of death bells ringing, and I'm going to chant... Yes. <laughs> Clangentibus met it. And I'm going to cast Toll the Dead on the armor. So you need to make a wisdom saving throw. A wisdom saving throw. <laughs> and it still has hex on the armor. Right. So if it works. Wisdom saving throw. Ooh. What's the DC? 15. Okay, it fails. Yeah! All right. <laughs> That's two d12, and then I get to add a d6. Ooh. 
Uh, that was such shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's better. Uh, ten points of necrotic damage. Ten nice. points of necrotic damage. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Okay. So it is. It is looking rough as it kind of stumbles a little bit, but doesn't quite and fall. I'm gonna get a little bit closer. I okay. think because I probably am the farthest out of everything. Perfect. Top of the round, Talus. You are currently trapped. It is dark and cramped in the chest of this armor. Uh, what would you like so to do? I'm legitimately like cramped inside of it. Like, yeah, just kind of like <laughs> you're kind of like just there. What would you like to do? Is she kind of like a newborn baby, just like kind of like bundled up in there? <laughs> yeah, but you're still able to wiggle around. Like you would still be able to cast if you wanted. I. Can I try to wiggle out? Are you that tiny? How's the head opening? How small is <laughs> Pop your head through? Can I pop my head through? Yeah, I'll let you do that as a reaction. Oh my god! <laughs> I love that. Pop my head through, and I'm like, help! <laughs> oh my! That feels adorable. So suddenly. <laughs> You, you watch your friend be engulfed oh, and swallowed by this armor into the chest cavity. As these books are going down, this darkness is disintegrating. Talos's head just pops up. Help! And she's still in this armor. <laughs> Would you like to do any actions? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm thinking... can i can i cast mage hand and like try to use it to pry open the the chest yeah absolutely uh read me off what mage hand does for those who doesn't who don't know a spectral floating hand appears at a point you choose within range the hand lasts for the duration or until you dismiss it as an action. The hand vanishes if it is even ever more than 30 feet away from you or if you cast the spell again. You can use your action con- to control the hand. You can use the hand to manipulate an object, open in a locked door or container, sew or retrieve an item from an open container, or pour the contents out of a vial. You can move the hand up to 30 feet each time you use it. The hand can't attack, activate magic items, or carry more than 10 pounds. Perfect. All right. Yeah. If you would like to... Cast my channel is just fine. Uh, I will do that. <laughs> okay, you cast me. What <laughs> color is your mage hand? It is orange. Ooh. All right. So you watch as Talus pops her head out. Help! And then <laughs> mage hand. <laughs> All right. So you are trying to open the chest. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. your mage hand <laughs> okay roll me a sh- roll me strength for your mage hand i want to see what their contested is going to be oh i forgot it's like strength. 10 pounds <laughs> <laughs> 10 right. pounds of strength that's <laughs> um do i use my strength modifier yeah use yours for this i'll let you use yours oh no i I think that might be even worse. Oh uh, dear. If you would like to use theirs instead, I'll let you I'll let you choose what you'd like to do for this one. I, I don't know. The, does the hand have like stats? <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Let's dive deep into the The into lore the of Mage Hand stats. Hi Dice Cream. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I like how I looked up, I was like, oh what do you know about Mage Hand? <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Oh, dice cream! I have not rolled high. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't Been use a, that. Uh, got well. a nat one already. Okay. Got two nat ones so, actually. Use your strength. I'll let you, use use yours. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I oh, rolled dear. a seventeen, but it is now sixteen. I had <laughs> <laughs> strength, man. Hey, we have the same strength modifier. All right. What did you roll? Oh dear, we have a really strong team then. <laughs> We're very weak. Okay. Tell us, I am a squish. Oh and then there's Brad. <laughs> then there's Brad. All right, tell us what did you roll? 
Look at that Adonis. <laughs> she grows. Oh no, we lost Ava. Behold that one of that glory. <laughs> oh no, we lost Ava. Did she say she rolled a 17? Uh, yeah, with a 16 min minus one. 16, 16 yeah. interval. 16? Okay, perfect. I will wait for them to see if they reload. I'm oh, back. I okay. missed whatever just happened. <laughs> You're like, I like how you came back and like this. Like, <laughs> All right, perfect. That's not a problem. So, as your this orange spectral mage hand is cast out of this, as you pop your head out of this arbor and say, help! The, the mage hand not only opens the front of this arbor, but absolutely crushes it under its fist. Oh. And you are free, yeah. As the, you just hear the, the crunch of this metallic sound as it hits the floor, as it drops it. Do you have anything else you can do? Okay. I'll touch you. you can take your movement to get out of the armor. Yes, I will okay. do that. You stole my idea. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Right out. All right, so you get out of I the am armor. strong. Get out strong. Of the armor. The only okay, thing is, so the only I will get out, and then can I use my bonus action to fight? Yeah. What do you? What I is got your? Spooked. I got okay. spooked. <laughs> what are your bonus spooked. actions that you can use? Uh, dash, disengage, or hide. Okay, so you're wanting to disengage or hide, mm. or dash. I went into hide, but I don't know if I can hide without disengaging because then he'll get an attack of opportunity. So I'll just do disengage. Disengage? Okay, so you Run just away. take a couple steps back. Perfect. Rad, it is your turn. You just watched Talus pop her head up out of this armor that she had currently beheaded. Help! A spectral <laughs> orange mage hand as it casts out from this armor and leaks through the seals and the cracks in it as it crushes the door and drops it. And Talus pops out and takes a couple of spe steps back. What would you like to do? That's to what I was that. going to do. And <laughs> go back and hit it with my um, uh, witch bolt again. Uh, going to do that because I don't have to cast it again. Um, <laughs> so, rolling for attack on witch bolt. Uh, 17 plus 4. 17 plus 4? Perfect. Yeah, you absolutely hit. Because, again, I can't math. Um, <laughs> what's addition? Oh, what's addition? Yeah, We're D&D players. We don't know basic math. Again, <laughs> I'll say I don't do math, but I use math rocks. Um, exactly. I rolled five on damage. I need a new D12. As he, what, are you, what are you using to hit it? Your sword again? Uh, no, this is Witch Bolt. Witch Bolt? Perfect. You rolled five on damage. What color is your Witch Bolt? Blue? Uh, yeah. Blue? Perfect. Okay, so... As you watch Talos pop out of this arbor after this astral hand kind of is, is there, she steps back and you're like, ugh, and you hit it. How would you like to do this? Yeah. <laughs> again. <laughs> again. 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 Do it again. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Ash, I haven't had one of these in a while. Okay. Um, uh, one in my surprise that she was able to get out, mm -hmm. I'll sort of nod wherever she's going of like good job mm -hmm. and then i'll take a growl and just and then force my lightnings into it perfect as you force your lightnings into it you see the chamber of where talus just popped out of glow with blue as it kind of falls back and hits its back and it lays still not moving then the book which is the very last thing kind of floats floats around and goes to hit you after you hit it. After you hit the armor and it goes down this book in a rage of seeing its friend go down, <laughs> swings down and hits you. What does First... a rage kill book look like? Can't <laughs> I use my instinctual dodge? Yes, you can absolutely use your instinctual dodge. So tell us how your instinctual dodge works. Um, when you are hit by a weapon attack as a reaction, you may attempt to dodge out of the way of the attack, roll a d6, and reduce the damage taken by the amount rolled. Perfect. Okay, so roll your d6 for me, and I'll tell you how much damage you've taken. Six. Perfect. You take zero damage as this book smacks in your face, and you kind of bat Lucky. it away. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, uh, nah. All I think right. the term paw at it. Yeah, you just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right 
<laughs> Val, it is your turn. Uh, how far away is the book from me now? Um, 15, 20 feet. Enough for you she to like, either walk up and stab it or just shoot it. She just like turns and looks at it and goes, oh, this is going to be fun. And just like <laughs> two beams of Eldritch Blast go blasting at the way it book. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Roll to hit it. <laughs> uh, first one's the nat 20. Okay. So with nat 20s, we double the damage. So it'll take double Beautiful. damage. Do we double uh, dice damage or do we like, like, do we double the dice or just double the damage in total? We'll double the dice. Uh, so we're only okay. two. So, uh, so we're, we're just doubling the dice then? You double, said? The, double the dice. Yep. Okay. So that is a, uh, do, 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 sorry, math. You're fine. You're fine. We don't do math. Uh, <laughs> little, uh, 16 on the first one for damage. Okay. Ooh, and stop. Then... You, how much do you want? Okay. How, how do you want to down it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's, a it's a book it's a book she just turns she stares it down and then whips out this like off like the tip of her sword just goes this red bolt and all you see this bo book is just like somehow just explodes in pages yeah pages all over the floor they flutter down kind of burning and <laughs> singeing a little bit as they hit the floor eventually burning themselves out and you are out of initiative as everything around you has either been disintegrated or and the armor is laying on the floor resting. As you look mm. over to the wall, you can see the off. outline of where Kor accidentally hit the wall instead <laughs> of a book or any a thing of, you know, of an enemy as it slowly singed a little bit has stopped burning. Oh, good. Coraline's just going to be holding her book. To get picked out of this library. As. And cry a little bit. <laughs> Brad, there is still oh. one book on the floor that you kicked, but the other two books' pages have been disintegrated and, and are flying everywhere. One of them was entirely di di disintegrated. Whoops. Can I inspect the book that I kicked? You absolutely can inspect the book you kick. Roll me a perception check. Or an investigation check, sorry. Yee. Again, math. Um, investigation. 13. 13? Okay. 17 total. It's a book, so it's, it's not hard to figure out what it says. So as you pick it up... Short History of Dwarves, part two. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite! Volume two. The shorter, the better. The shorter so, history. So as you pick it up and read the back of the title, it just says, 50 things to do with a dead lich. You're not sure what the other two titles were, because the books were destroyed. Holy... Yeah, hey, what's wrong with your arm? <laughs> As this this combat ends, Yaddy comes running from around the corner. In his hands, he has his own weapons drawn, which you have never seen this man carry a weapon in his life. Are 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 you guys okay? Just yeah, that that is there is nothing anymore. We we took care of it, but uh. What was this magic item you had? It attacked us, and then there were books flying everywhere, this... and also trying to attack us. He kind of. This doesn't happen in libraries often, right? This has never happened, and he looks a little, <laughs> a little worried and a little scared himself. Which normally, Yadi himself is very composed. He's a very stoic kind of lizard folk, but he. I run. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're fine. Tell us what's up. I run towards the couch, and I'm like the cat. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was, I was about to like Scritches learned like Scritches hid or went into the Fey realm, and I was Coraline's was going to start walking towards the shield that made it em like an emanating thing. I was going to go like put her hands on that, and touch it. So see as, what that was like. As you walk in, and and yeah, he's like a little freaked out, which you have never seen him this way at all. He, you all turn to look where Coraline is headed towards this aura and the light of it has completely gone out it is now just a, a hollowed globe with nothing inside and Yaddy kind of scrunches where his eyebrows would be on it and <laughs> kind of looks at it he's like this has never happened before so, something must be going on because I've, I've never seen it and I, I this, this is new 
I'm going to need to do some research and quickly walks away, stops in his tracks and looks back. I I'm glad you're okay. And he, and he kept walking. You too, Yachty. Not very straightforward. Right? That wait, was. Wait, but what, but what was the item? What was it about to do? And where did Yachty go? Like, what? what not going to explain anything? I, I'm, you know, in this sort of situation where you walk into that in your own library, he's probably in shock. I give give him a few minutes or so. We'll be able to go on top of him. But uh, perhaps we should maybe help him clean up. Not like this was an intended mess, but I feel bad for the man. Right. See if there's any other fun books that fell off the shelf. Ugh. Give him a few wax before putting him back. <laughs> if you hurt one book on those shelves, I will personally be very upset. And she'll be like <laughs> be clutching her spell book that she has in her arms with like a little tiny of like glassy eyes going on. Like I mean like drop them <gasps> once or twice and then put them back just to make sure they don't come flying at your head. I have a, I'll go take care of the books and she will start walking over and just dusting them off. Putting them in my room. <laughs> as as, so as you're putting the books back up, none of the titles stick out. You know, there's, there's like a journey beyond the veil and like, what color is your dragon? And you, you know, just like your your normal like accounting for orcs and and all all of these these things, as as you're just kind of putting them out, none of them seem to have any rhyme or reason. They just are normal books as you put them back up, and there seems to be no other magic rating off, off of them. There, there's uh, singe on where Coraline accidentally hit the wall. But otherwise, everything seems to have quieted down, and the library is back to its quiet self. I'm going to druidcraft a little tiny flower and just put it in the singed hole. <laughs> <laughs> and then continue to work on the books. <laughs> Does anyone have mending? No. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to go to the couch and see if my coffee's still there. Your coffee's there, but it's kind of cold now. <laughs> Scritches is gonna like do like a, that weird little. There's like a book kind of upright, and it's gonna appear from like the side of the book, and just walk out and start weaving between Talus's legs. Uh, <laughs> as you all are cleaning up, Yadi will eventually come back. <clears throat> Weapons no longer on his person or visible. Kind of gesture to you all to come take a seat on these couches with him. Got some answers. He kind of shrugs. I hope so. Ah. And he sits down on one of the, the one of the couches. Riven plops down in on the couch opposite him and goes. So, what was that? He kind of waits for everybody else to join him. Coraline is ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rodifer is leaning up against the wall, but is in no way, shape, or form at ease and is just resting on his sword, okay. ready just in case. Perfect. Cersei? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's going to she's going to go uh, over to the couch behind Coraline. And kind of just like put. I'm hand probably hand. sitting on the floor personally. Oh. I probably I'm the I'm the floor sitter. I don't really okay. sit on couches. Yeah, she'll probably just like kind of like stand behind her and just kind of like summon her thing back to her and then just let it disapparate. <laughs> okay, so as you kind of gather around, Yadi for the first time takes off his very very thick gold rimmed glasses and, and sets them down and folds them and he looks a little concerned as he looks around you at you all and I've never seen this happen in any city or any library that as he gestures to the now empty globe which 
used to house this aura of green and gold is, is a shield. It's meant to protect. I, I don't, this has never happened in any other city. This has not happened in any of my years as a librarian in any library. But, and he kind of looks around the party. I've, I've received a message from another librarian, another town over that also has one of these shields that face something similar. But no books attacked. They, they don't know if anything has happened, but an aura of the same nature came in a wave off of it. Was this recently? This was at the same time. Like, just now? Your security systems went off at the same time. Yes. How many other towns and libraries have this shield? It's it's a network of us. Uh, we're researchers and, and we protect knowledge. And he kind of gestures to his library, which now has a singe on the wall. And he kind of like sees the singe on the wall, throws his brows. I added a flower and... if it makes it feel any better. <laughs> It, it, it's, it's like a sunflower. I, I will. I'll, I'll clean that later. But Sorry. the radius of this seems to have been at least a couple of miles. But it wasn't every town. I've not received messages from anybody else that's having issue. Uh, I I pull out my map and put it on the coffee table. Can you mark on here which towns that you have received a message from? Uh, the, the fact that this happened at the same time is is far too coincidental. And he, let me, boop, I uh, pulled the map here. And he takes the map and kind of looks it over. Mm, I, well, it, it was just this one. And he points to one that you haven't been to personally yet because it's, it's not known for its vast research or anything. But Asmar, right, right there, and marks it. Not too cool. far away. What? What were these supposed to be protected? Just the buildings. It's to keep magic of a destructive nature out. It's it's more of just a, a shield. But this is the first time that they've actually been used, and it's not supposed to do that. So they're he not supposed to explode? He kind of turns and like looks at you, oh, try to figure out if you're being sarcastic or not. No. <laughs> I'm like dead patting and being like, you, I'm kind of serious about this. You, no, they're not meant you, to explode. Do you know that if um, Don Caven experienced the same thing? I have not heard from my messenger there yet. Why? Do you know someone there? If you do, could you just let me know? Just curious. I can keep a message. Sure. All right. I hate to ask this, but would any of you go look for me? I personally cannot leave the library now, especially since this has happened. To Asmar. Yes. How far is it? It's about a day and a half's journey. Yeah, um, that... Raven looks around to the rest of the group. I, I could I... pay you. <laughs> we don't know well, you just sweetened the deal. Um... I'm in. <laughs> I, I mean, I wouldn't ask upright for payment, but it would probably help in our travels. Any supplies that we could get to possibly help out with this problem i can only speak for myself but this is Worrisome. as so as, as someone who very much treasures everything in every library although some cannot have the information that i am looking for but that is not your fault um <laughs> i i cannot i cannot let this happen in any more libraries they're it's... far too, they're far too important is there any place to the east that you need us to check out instead, by chance? Not that I've heard of. He kind of looks at you. Why the east? If you're not up for this mission, you don't need to go. Coraline's just gotten really <laughs> awkward. 
<laughs> Quiet. <laughs> Um, is this, is, is, um, (laughs) Asmar Mm -hmm. my town? I will talk to you about (laughs) off stream. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I just, I want to know if there's any reason why I would go. (laughs) You would go. You know there's a guild there. At the very least. I'm down to go that way. We don't really have much of a direction, but that's inland, so good direction. Coraline, this is the first time I've seen you quiet since I've met you. Though I have not known you for long. What is wrong? Why are you not wanting to go? I don't really like that area. If I could go with you guys, it's fine. I just would prefer not to head that direction. Is there, I'm sure we can discuss this at another time, but is there? Yeah, it's um... fine. We can go. We can go. It's totally okay. I can do it. Can do it. Next. Bad family issues? I'm sure there are ways to disguise yourself that you do not. Uh, at That's... that, she will cock her eyebrow. Yeah, like, no, you're right. And she will. <laughs> Take her little hat, flick the rim, and she will turn into an identical twin of Raven. <laughs> I mean, I was going to offer help because I also have that, but... Um, yeah, the... There we go. Kind of sits back at that. Huh. That's not I don't know I how I feel about this. For a long time. Sorry. Um, oh. She will flip it and flick her rim again and turn into just a... I'm sure to just bring her looking human. <laughs> I'm sure to with brown hair. Look, and... she'll look into like Anne from the tavern. Oh, Orline, you have a uh... gifts. You <laughs> a lot more interesting than I expected. She will <laughs> lift her hat, turn into herself, put her hat back on, and turn into Anne. It's a fun little thing. Impressive. <laughs> I see. Do I really look like that? I see. <laughs> Pull her hat down a little bit long. It's the, uh, you know, it's the, uh, how, how she sees you. Ah. So. Beautiful and charming, I got it. Yes, exactly. So oh, took like... words that out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we can twin for a little bit, it'll be great. <laughs> Ooh. I need you to do that at the tavern with me. This is gonna be fun. Oh, and with okay. that, yeah, he kind of looks between you all. So, <laughs> with, look, look, look on it. But uh, if I can say for everyone, we're will we will you join me in this mission? Because I certainly am going. I let's do it. Definitely. This is on. Let's so do it. Uh, Try to be ready. <laughs> I, I don't. Look- there he goes, we're going to work on this. Yeah. We're going to work on this. <laughs> <laughs> and with uh, that, yeah, the I get it? kind of puts down Pretty good. a bag of gold and we fade out. As this is the end of the first session. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> 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 Going on an adventure. <laughs> Going on an adventure. Wow. If you guys want to give your handles real quick before we sign off for the night, uh, I will make one announcement. I believe we are playing next week with the. Yeah. Okay, if everybody was good with that. Um, normally, yeah. this will be a bi weekly stream, but with the holidays coming up and then with the technical issues that we had last week, we will be playing next week and then we will be taking you know, our holiday. But we will be here next week, 7 p.m. Central, 8 east so you guys can see these lovely people and myself dm to see where these wonderful individuals are headed next (laughs) uh if you want to give your handles we'll start with ava um ava makes on mostly tiktok i'm also on twitter and instagram it differs by like ava.makes or ava underscore makes something like that (laughs) perfect uh abby once again, 
I am mostly known as Giggle Girl Productions uh, with varying uh, capitalization, mostly on TikTok, but I'm also on Instagram. <laughs> Perfect. Din. Uh, I am Din Studios 15 on TikTok and Din Studios on Instagram. Perfect. Nat? I'm Nat20 underscore NPC on TikTok and Instagram. Let me put into my per, uh, advertiser <laughs> voice. You can find me there, and I am super excited to have any new followers. Oh my God, this was a very great episode. Val? <laughs> so great. Uh, I am Basic Valkyrie on TikTok and Basic underscore Valkyrie on Instagram. Perfect. And I'm your DM. I'm Ivy, and I am Gamer the Girl, both on TikTok, Instagram, Discord, wherever you can find me. And we will be here next week at 7 <laughs> Have a good day, okay. guys. Okay. <laughs>